Hello, once again, viewers of TK Solutions TV. My name is TK. I'm your host for Off the Page with TK. We're back in studio. Today, we're joined by uh, one of the best midfielders, but I believe he was underrated in this country. He played for Jomo Cosmos, Beat Best Vets, Super Sport United, and Moraga Swallows. He also had a stint at Silver Stars. Uh, help me welcome Mark Haskins to our studio. Mark? TK, thanks, man. It's great to be here. How's it, my guy? I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's great, that's great. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, the last time I think I saw you, beside on TV, on your other activities, is when you were still playing. I remember you used to pack a very nice shot. <laughs> I'm sure most goalkeepers <laughs> knows you. <laughs> hey, um, yeah, I think it's something that I didn't do enough. I think everywhere I went, I think uh, people used to fight with me that I don't use what I have enough. And yeah. so, I didn't score nearly as ma as much as I should have um, yeah. from range. I, I did score some some really nice goals, but uh, not regular enough. Yeah, when you did it, it was always right, but you didn't do it often. Yeah, that's you the problem. And I, uh, I don't know. Um, you know, when you when you retire, you reflect back. Yeah. Um, and maybe I was too much of a team player. So that that, that could um, be. Because if I can think of middle fielders who pack short, it's Trompo Kekana and you, and you were almost playing same roles. Yeah. But uh, I don't know why you didn't do more of that. No, I mean, we had great duels. You mentioned Slompo. We've played against one another numerous times, and we've always had some great, great encounters. Um, yeah, I think um, I, I was goal shy, I guess. I, I, didn't, I didn't believe in myself enough. Yeah. I think that's one of the things we'll probably discuss at length today. But I didn't, I didn't completely um, believe in my ability, and I didn't allow myself to really play to the level that I should have. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's, it's a mindset and you know when they say the game is 90% mental, yeah. that's the reality. And I think mentally I probably wasn't where I needed to be. Yeah, you, you needed a bit of arrogance. Maybe you were too nice. Definitely <laughs> and I think I've been told that. Yeah. Um, the, every, literally every coach I played for told me those exact words mm. where they said, no, you need to be a bit more arrogant and you need to you know, um, take more authority, be more assertive on the field. Um, and yes, like you say, I guess I was too nice on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks, man. Welcome to Off the Pitch. Uh, uh, Off the Pitch with TK is a show, Mark, where we, we sit with uh, former players, uh, coaches. It, it's, it's a bigger scope, but n currently we're talking to players and coaches. We're still going to get to chairmen and all that. But as the name suggests, it's, it's Off the Pitch issues. Mm. Uh, footballers go through a lot of the pitch. And as fans, we don't know and we tend to judge. But by doing this kind of a program, we are educating fans to say, hey, this is what footballers are going through. At the same time, the current players and upcoming ones, they get to understand better when they hear it from a former player to say, football has its dynamics. Football does end, and when it ends, it's not the end of the world. You still need to survive. So thanks, thanks a lot for making time to come here. We, we don't take it for granted. We really appreciate it. Uh, I want to start it from the beginning. For somebody who doesn't know Mark Haskins, where do you originate from? Um, yeah, that's a funny thing and uh, in my career a lot of people didn't know I was even I remember one publication actually said I'm a full Namibian international. Wow. They said I, like I'm from Namibia. Uh, I don't know where they got that from. It's again um, yeah. very reckless reporting but never been to Namibia uh -huh. ever. I still would love to go. I've heard it's a great place. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm from Joburg. I'm not from Cape Town, not from PE. I'm Joburg born and bred. I'm from a township in the south, Aldo's, right okay. next to Soweto. So I'm from Eldorado Park, very proudly so. Um, you know, Aldo's is notorious for all the wrong reasons, mm. um, but there's some good things that come out of Aldo's, and I'd like to think I'm one of them. Um, so I'm from Aldo's, born and bred. I lived in Joburg my whole life, and that's even my football career. I played all my uh, career in Joburg. Um, and so. I grew up in Eldos, that's where I learned my trade, playing on the streets, like every other kid in South Africa, you learn playing in the streets. And so I grew up there, lived in Eldos, played my initial years in Eldos before moving out and playing for Wit University as a junior. Mm -hmm. um, I think I played there for one year, um, but where I think my, my football got serious, if I can say that is when I went to Transnet. It was, I think it was called the Neil Tovey School of Excellence kind of thing, or they used Neil Tovey's name yeah. in it, uh, but we know it was, uh, it was the sister program for the School of Excellence. Okay. So it was aligned with the School of Excellence. It was run by Farouk Khan. Hmm. We had some top coaches there. Ian, the, the late Ian Palmer was one of our coach, 
Coach Kurt, Coach Para, mm. um, you know, the Coach Zuna. Oh, the list is ending. We had some really, really good coaches. Um, so we got really good coaching. Um, I think I was 14, 15, around that time. Um, so we, we had a, a, a great rivalry even because we were the sister program with the School of Excellence. Mm. So at the school, you had the likes of, obviously, Steven Pinar, Brett Carlson, Ninja, Mofo King. Yeah. Um, I mean, the list is endless. Yeah. Uh, Dominic Isaac, Sean Potgitter, mm. some quality players obviously yeah. at the school. And, you know, on our side, we also had some, some really, really good players. A few of them actually ended up going to the U.S., living there, staying there. Um, but we had a very good rivalry, intense rivalry. It was always great games. Uh, but I think that's probably where my football got very serious. And um, then from there, I moved. I played for my uncle at Mondio Meteors out in the south. I went to school. Um, I was initially at Parktown Boys. Then I moved to Mondio High. Played for Mondio Meteors. Um, two of my teammates at Mondio Meteors actually went pro as well. The two that I can think of and is Shere Lekotwane. Yeah. So I know him for a very long time, very good friend of mine. And then Kahiso Denge. Yeah. Um, he's also a very good friend of mine. We still we play over 35s together even now. Um, but the three of us, I think, of that crop of players. And then even uh, the coach of Sundowns. Jerry uh, Shabalala, Jerry Shabalala yeah. he the played ladies, with the ladies, the ladies uh, coach, yes, coach, yeah. the ladies coach, yeah. uh, African champion, Yeah. Um, he played with us at some time, I, I don't know if a lot of people know, but that, that man was a player, yeah, That he was a proper, proper player, left footed, uh, he was uh, played as a six, um, mm. solid in the midfield, he was actually a very good player, he's one of those I thought would also make it pro, um, not sure quite where his journey took him after he left uh, Mondio, but he played with us for a short while. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where Jomo spotted me, playing for Mondio Meteo. So I remember the game. It was at, Virtun um, at Marks Park, playing mm -hmm. against Wits University. Mm -hmm. um, under 16, under 17, somewhere there. Played, um, what, I, don't know, I think the score was 2 all on the day. Um, but Jomo was there on the day. Mm. Um, and he asked me to, to join the under 19 uh, from there. And I guess that's where I come from. The rest, yeah. as they say, is yeah. history. So on that day when Jomo spotted you, did you know he was there to scout or you didn't know you were just playing a game? Um, we, well, you can't miss. He's a larger than life figure. Yeah. So <laughs> when Jomo's in the stands or like when he's watching, you, you can't miss him. So I did know he was there. Yeah. Um, I actually missed the sitter. Mm. In that game, um, like where literally I was on the far post and the ball came across and I was just supposed to tap it in and I hit it wide. Yeah, um, used the wrong technique. Yeah, no, completely <laughs> wrong. So, uh, but then, uh, you know, I think I'd already shown enough in terms of what I'm able to do. That one thing didn't really change his viewpoint. Um, I, I, I think I still had a good game and... Um, he was impressed enough. I think there were two of us. It was myself and another player on the Vits team, Shannon. Um, he asked us to join and join the under 19s. Um, and I, I didn't join immediately. I mm. said, oh, I'll finish the season with my team because I was playing for my uncle. So it was a bit of a tough one yeah. to just say to my uncle, hey, I'm leaving. Jomo wants me, I'm going. Yeah. So um, I said to him, no, it's fine. Now. Let me finish the season with, with the the current team because we were in contention for with, to win the league. We actually did win the league. And I think it was probably one of the first times in, uh, a Mondio Meteors team won the A League. Mm. Um, so at, at that point in the junior leagues, it was probably the top league uh, in, in Joburg, in Gauteng or whatever. Um, we beat, obviously, then Robert Jem Kelly's was like the top team. So we beat Robert Jem Kelly's, Wits University, all these teams to win the league. Um, so that was, was really nice. And then from there, I went on to, to join uh, Cosmos, the under-19 team. Yeah. Then when you get to under-19, you play for how long before you make, you go to the first team? <sighs> this is, has been, I always tell this and people don't always understand, but I literally was in the under-19 team for two months. Hmm. And I was offered a pro contract. I was 17 at the time. Yeah. I was in my grade 11 year, um, two months, literally, because the season ended with the 17s. I went to Cosmos. I, I played, uh, we won the league, played a cup final with Mondo Meteors. We lost the cup final. Mm. 
Then I went to against Robertsham because Robertsham was our major competition. Yeah. Beat them in the league. They beat us in the cup final. Then I went to play under 19s at Cosmos, mm. and they were in the cup final already against Robertsham. Mm. So I got my revenge against Robertsham. We beat them in the under 19 cup final. I scored in that game. Um, scored a really nice goal that Jomo even spoke about in the papers and everything. Mm. Um, but it was literally like two months before the end of that year. Mm. He'd invited me to, basically, they said, I remember after one friendly, one Saturday morning, um, I remember this very vividly, yeah. uh, like it was yesterday, yeah. that they pulled us after our team talk. Uh, I don't know if you remember, was it Manir? No. No, no, it wasn't Manir. Uh, Kwezi Masondo was Kwezi. the team manager of the yeah. first team. It wasn't him. I forget what our team manager's name of Before the 19s. Kwezi. Of the under 19s. Oh, of the under 19s. Of the under 19s. Yeah. Um, It'll come to me later. Okay. But he basically got us together and he said to us, four players have been called. They must go to the office on Monday morning to sign uh, their contracts. Uh, myself, mm -hmm. I remember Dikhang Mabalani was one of them. Motlatsi, was it Motlatsi Mafati? I think Motlatsi. Yeah, Motlatsi um, Mafati, yeah. Was it Mafati? I think something along those lines. He was one as well. And I think it was Innocent and Tume, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, but four of us were basically promoted to, to the first team. Um, and I mean, you can imagine as a 17-year-old, I've been here for two months. Yeah. I'm overjoyed. I'm going to be uh, joining the first team. I'm in grade 11. But then I get home and I give my mother this news. Mm. And I say to Ma, they said, I must come on Monday. I must come and sign a contract. And these are my mom's exact words. Like, yeah. uh, did you tell them no? <laughs> I'm like, what? what? Like, like literally, the, my mom was just like, nope, that's not going to happen. And so, yeah, that, that threw me a bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, it, they had the final say. My parents yeah. had the final say. I was, because by then you were under 18. I'm under 18. so They must agree for you yeah, to sign anything. There's no way I could have signed without their consent. Yeah. Um, but I went on Monday morning. I went with my dad. Uh, we went to a meeting with Jomo to try and understand what the situation was, uh, what, they, what they wanted us to do. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think my parents were not agreeing because obviously it would have affected my schooling drastically. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I look back at it, it's probably my own fault. Hmm. Um, I wasn't the model student, so I just had football in my head. I wasn't well-rounded which yeah. was uh, the biggest problem, I think, probably, that my parents were worried about. And if I look back at it, I don't know if I would have finished school yeah. if I did go up, yeah. if I did make the jump at the time. Um, I, I literally, I was scraping through every year kind yeah. of thing. I failed, I actually failed, um, what was it then? Standard 8, yeah. grade 10. 10 now. It, and at Parktown, they called it Form 3. Yeah. Um, so I failed a year in high school purely because and that's actually the year I was at school of a, at the um, the program the Transnet. at Transnet yeah. um, because literally we were training every day and I would go to training when I get home I put my bag in the corner I pick it up tomorrow morning exactly where <laughs> I found it didn't open a book didn't uh, apply myself and not that I didn't have the ability because when I did put some effort I actually was a model like I could have gotten really really good results yeah. um, but I was one track minded and I just wanted to focus on football. Like, not that I wanted to focus, I just wanted to play football. Yeah. I didn't think that, you know, I didn't see the value in education. I didn't see the value in applying myself at school. Um, and looking back in hindsight, it's, mm. it's something that I know, like I have a son now, I have a daughter, mm. and I, I tell them exactly where I went wrong yeah. and why I believe it's so important and so, um, the value of education is can't be overstated. So, yeah, that's why I, I, I do believe why they didn't allow me to enter at that point and probably the right thing. Yeah. I know that my parents, their dream for me was to go to the U.S., uh, mm. to go and study in the U.S. And so I did get that opportunity, but I wouldn't have been able to do that because the rules of college football, if you've signed a professional contract, if you've been a professional, mm. you can't get a scholarship to play at college level in the U.S., and so that basically put a hold on my entry into the pro ranks. So yeah. I was supposed to start when I was 17, 
I only started when I was 20, if I'm not mistaken. So I finished grade 11, grade 12, yeah. and then I went to the US uh, immediately after matric. Yeah. Mm. Then, after you finished matric, you went to USA? Yeah. You I left Cosmos? I got, a, I got a scholarship to go to university in the USA, yeah. Mm. So obviously that was, um, I had to explain to Jomo as well. It's not like I was leaving to go to another club. I was going to university. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> because he also, I mean, I'd been in the team for two years, so they weren't really sure what the situation was. So, like, are you going, you know how players, I'm going here, but then they end up at another club or whatever. Mm. But I was going to university, so I got a scholarship straight out of high school. Mm. Um, and I was at Florida Atlantic University, in FAU, in, mm. in Boca Raton, Florida, but it's probably the most liberating um, year of my life in terms of growing up as an individual because I had a very sheltered upbringing. Mm. So even growing up in Eldos, I was, my, you know, my mom was very careful with where we are, you know, so I wasn't exposed to the vices yeah. of, you know, the community. We know what most of our townships are plagued with, but luckily um, I was very sheltered and so, um, going there and now being on my own and having to fend for myself, it was a very, very, very liberating experience and I had to grow up really quick. Mm. Shez, sorry, mm. it's the UPS powered it up. Or when I came to UPS, I want to switch on more black. The black one is powering the camera. No, not there. On the multi-black. Because it, it's saying to you, I'm running. Yeah. Because you're not buzzing again. Yeah, give on the buzzer. But it's plugged. Yeah. Why is it buzzing? Okay. That's fine. So yeah, that's it's black. Hey, sorry man. This load shading, we have a generator, but sometimes when it changes, to keep things on, we have a UPS. <laughs> no stress, no stress. All right. Uh, Okay, at least I've ended, because uh, I wanted you to end the USA. <laughs> to no, I, I saw, I saw, that's yeah. why I tried to cut it. Yeah. Uh, right, Chess? Yeah. Okay. So now, you stayed for how long go US? Just for one year. For one year? For one year. And again, why did you? Fault. Okay, why did you come back? Well, I wanted to turn pro. Like, I, the whole US, uh, going to college in the US was really more for my parents. Um, even there, I didn't apply myself academically, so I couldn't have stayed even if I wanted to. Yeah. Because I didn't pass. That's the reality <laughs> of it. I barely went to class. I, yeah. was, I never missed a training session, mm. but I, I barely went to class. So, um, again, it was very irresponsible of me, um, and I didn't take the opportunity seriously. Um, because, again, my mind was only pro football. Yeah. Um, not even pro. I think I was very like I was just too chilled in in life in general. I, I was just too relaxed and I didn't apply myself and I didn't push yeah. myself. So even with my football, I didn't. I was happy being a good player. So mm. I was there. I was good. I was always better than the average. I was always a standout player, mm. and so it was always easy for me. So I walked into most teams, um, and it wasn't. I didn't really have to push myself. Um, and I honor God for the, the ability he gave me, but when I look back at it, I was reckless with that. I wasn't, um, I didn't push myself to the full of my ability to really maximize my ability. And even academically, even, um, I think I'm a relatively smart person, so I didn't push myself in that regard mm -hmm. either. I mean, I didn't qualify to go to university in South Africa because I didn't get a, what we now call a bachelor's pass. Yeah. Back then we called it exemption. Exemption, yes. I didn't get exemption. So mm. I couldn't go to university in South Africa. I didn't qualify. Mm. I barely passed my trick. Um, but I wrote one exam that qualified me to go to university in the US. Mm. So it's not that I'm dumb or that I couldn't. Yeah. It's literally if I applied myself and I put effort in, it was, I could easily have done it. Um, I could easily have been an A student. Mm. Um, but again, it's the mental thing. Uh, and so I fell short in that thing. So I, I spent a year there, but I was looking and my real goal was to make the Olympic team. Mm. Um, Which and was I, the Olympic team for the 2000? 
No. Or which year? It was for 04, the 04 2004. Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the generation after the 2000, the, 2000. the Sydney one. Yeah. So um, I really, I was part of that group um, and I was hoping to be part of that, that, that team and I knew, I was actually watching the Olympics in the US, mm. the 2000 Olympics, I was yeah. in the US Okay. Um, when we beat Brazil and yeah. you know, all the, so I, I had my mindset on that and I knew that playing college football in the USA mm. was not going to get me there. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons um, I wanted to come back home. And so I spent a year there. While I was there, I trained with an MLS team. I trained with um, Miami Fusion, it was at the time. I remember um, at my college team, the Chicago Fire came to train with mm. the, my college team as well. Risto Stoichkov was part of that team yeah. at the time. Mm. Um, and so I trained, uh, they came and trained at our school and I trained kind of with them as well. But, but it was just because they were there and I was uh, part of the school team. Mm. Um, but they couldn't, it's, none of those teams would be able to sign me because I w would have been a foreigner. And at that time, you only allowed, I think it was two foreigners at the time. And um, obviously they were bringing in marquee players. So, I mean, they were bringing in the Stoichkovs and yeah. all these players. Klinsman went over there um, to obviously uh, raise the, the, the value and the interest in the league. Mm. Um, so I even getting into the MLS at that point was going to be difficult for me. So that's why I made the decision to come back home. But like I said, I didn't apply myself as well. Yeah. So, but when I came back, obviously, um, again, I think maybe it was too easy. Yeah. Because I just called Jomo, um, mm. went to training, and I basically walked into the team again. He was happy to have me back, um, and. That was my entry into professional football. Now, on your return from USA, you are 20? Yeah, I turned 20. Then actually. you signed your first pro contract? Oh, yeah, basically. By that time, you've got an agent or no, Jomo no, no. knows you, I, you are Jomo's boy? Jomo didn't allow agents yeah? back then, no. Especially the youngsters, juniors. Mm. I don't even know of any of the senior players who had agents at that point mm. at Cosmos. I really don't, I don't know of any. Um, but definitely, I know. I, I went with my dad again. Yeah. Um, went, had a chat with Jomo. I went to meet Jomo first on my own. He said, no, it's fine. I must come and train. Went to training. And, uh, you know, then he said, I must come with my dad. We'll discuss the terms and everything. Mm. Went with my dad, signed. Um, I think I signed a one-year contract initially. Mm. And then after that, because I came, the season had already started. Mm. So I, I finished, I came back from the U.S. around September mm. of 2001. Mm. September, yeah, September, October. So the season had started already. So I just signed until the end of that current season. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I signed, uh, renewed for another three years after that. Yeah. But I, did, I think my initial contract was just till the end of that season. Then the, the, that's the initial one. Then the second one was the three years. Yeah. And by then, have you played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played, um, but I only made my debut because that, remember, that was that season where, um, where we made the Coke final, the first Coke final against Chiefs, the yeah. famous Jabu. Yeah, the one you lost 5 nil. The one we lost 5 nil. Yeah. Where Jabu hammered us. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't, on the, I wasn't in the squad for that game. Mm. I remember mm. I was playing a six-a-side tournament at the time. Mm. I just heard afterwards, hey, they got, we got hammered. Um, but I only made my debut, the, I think, in the second part, half of the season. Okay. I remember my debut was in uh, Eastern Cape against Bushbucks. Mm. We beat them 3-0, if I'm not mistaken. I came off the bench. So there was, I was on the bench for a long time, mm. but it was always tight games. And so it's like Jomo didn't want to you know, risk it or yeah. he wasn't sure if there was the right time to give me my debut. Um, but eventually we were 3-0 up in one game. Esau mm. Kanyenda scored a hat-trick. Yeah. Um, then he threw me in. Um, and I had a decent debut. Um, Should have scored though. Mm. But again, I think... Uh, lack of confidence because there's one ball I picked up in the middle and I just ghosted past everyone, got to the goal and I froze. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, that kind of plagued my career. Yeah. Um, but I think it was a decent enough debut. So I was always good enough, mm. but I never allowed myself to be great, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. Um, purely because I, I, I restricted myself a lot. So even my debut, uh, I came on and I did well, mm. but I could have done so much better. Yeah. Yeah. So every player has a different story with their first contract, and usually it's either determines how your career is going to be, because how you start financially in a team mm. determines your next contract, the jump. How was your first contract as a pro? Uh, you, are, you are not known, you are entry, you go to Cosmos. Cosmos, Jomo uh, players will tell you he was, like you said, there were not a lot of agents because Jomo scout his own players. Yeah. So he's the one who's bringing you to his team, mm. Grand Grand. It's not an agent. An agent who brings you there, yeah. yeah no. how, how was your deal? In what sense? Financial wise, because some players will say my first corner was 2.5, 3.5. No, so it, um, it was a standard back then. I got more than what I was expecting. Yeah. Um, so this was 2001, my first contract. I, like my first season was five, mm. 5K a month. Yeah. And so um, no sign on fee or anything. Yeah. It's just your And you are not working anyway. You are not. Yeah, you're not there working. There's no benchmark. You're not doing anything. It's a start. Yeah. I mean, I spoke to some of the guys. Some of the guys started on lower than that. Mm. So I thought, okay, if they started on that, maybe then I'll probably start on the same. So yeah. when I got more than that, I was like, okay, yeah. um, I guess I'm fine. And, and there's that. no signing on fee? By then you don't even know what is signing on no, fee? No, I mean, no, no. Back then we didn't know, <laughs> understand, like, okay, about a sign-on fee or anything like that. So it was literally just the, the salary. Yeah. 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 Now, that, that first season ends, now you're going to a 3S. I'm sure now you are a regular, now you are playing. Um, I wouldn't say I wasn't a regular, no. Huh? I was still, I was always a squad player. Mm. I was always in the 18, um, but I wasn't playing regularly. Mm. Um, so I was still in and out. I would come off the bench. Um, but again, uh, I think that also, was also a big problem because I was a utility player. Mm. Because I could play um, multiple positions. And so it's like I'd be on the bench, but I wouldn't have a set position mm. in terms of where I play. And so I'd o often come in there, there, wherever there is. So I'll always be on the bench, and if someone is not performing in a certain position, yeah, they plug you in. I plug in. Yeah. I go in. So I always I say to people that the only two positions I didn't play in my career mm. is goalkeeper and centre back as yeah. a pro mm. in the PSL. I played left back, right back, left wing, right wing, six, eight, ten, striker. Mm. Yeah, all of them. You played the only two I didn't play: centre back and goalkeeper. Sure. Literally. And so that was that kind of my first two seasons, I would say. That was uh, a lot my story where I was on the bench um, and I would literally just get thrown in to the point where one day I actually I went to Jomo and I asked him, I said, coach, uh, I don't want to just be a bench player. Because yeah. the funny thing is that guys were coming into the squad. Mm into the lineup from out of the they weren't even in the 18 mm. they would be they would do well at training mm. into the starting 11 they jump they jump mm. and then next week out maybe they come in they didn't play so well out yeah not even in the 18 yeah but me i was consistent always in the 18 mm. and then eventually i went to uh, to coach and i'm like coach i don't just want to be a bench player like at this point i don't even know where i play Mm. So I asked him and I said, what do you think? What's my, what position am I, am I competing for? Mm. And then he said, no. And we had a great conversation. Yeah. He said, either as a, a, a right wing mm. or behind the strikers. Mm. Those are mine. I'm like, okay, that makes sense to me. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, I can compete. I'm happy to fight. Then I asked him and I said, okay, so what, what do I need to work on in my game to, you know, to really push myself and to take my game up? Mm. He says, no concentration mm. so you need to improve your concentration you lose concentration in the games so i got some great feedback yeah and i go away thinking ah no now i've got my notes i understand now <laughs> yeah i can work on these things yeah i <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know if i offended the coach uh. by doing that uh. but next five games uh. i wasn't even in the anywhere near the squad <laughs> For five games, <laughs> so I then it got me like, Aish. so I don't know. Maybe I went about it wrong. I don't yeah. know. Um, I've never gone to speak to him about it since. I but I learned the lesson. Maybe I shouldn't challenge the coach like that. Yeah. Um, so five games out, and then after five games, I was back in the squad. Nothing mm. was said. It's like okay, let's continue. So then we just carried on. 
And then in that three years, did you did you finish it that three years? Being um, the, the team player? No, two and a half, two and a half years. Mm. Because um, at the end of... So, what actually happened, I think uh, Jomo took a bit of a knock when Mabalani left. Mm. Um, so if you remember Dikhan, um, it was a shock to everyone because mm. he had signed a pre-contract mm. with Supersport mm. and nobody knew. So at the end of that season, um, it was like, hey, Terminator's gone to Supersport. Mm. And, you know, before then it was kind of unheard of. That's when the whole pre-contract thing like really just came in. Yeah. Um, so you signed six months before your contract yeah. ends. And so Terminator did that without anybody knowing. Um, and so I think after that, Jomo kind of was like, okay, no, that six months prior to your end, you have to renew. Yeah. You have to get the players to renew. So I played um, my first, first year. I still wasn't a regular. Then I became a regular. Um, I was playing and then I remember competing with Chris Katongo. Mm. We were the two, like, he was playing left. Right wing, I was playing left wing. Mm. Um, we were playing three up front. Russell Mwafuliru up top, Chris Katongo and myself. Mm. Um, and that's when we, we had a really good team, but we were struggling for results. Yeah. Um, I remember Chris and I were uh, both on four goals. Mm. Um, so we were kind of competing, yeah. you know, in terms of the goal scoring. Um, but yo, it was it was a tough period. It was when we were now. I think the first season where Cosmos really fought relegation, mm. um, and so we were going strong. But then at the end of that season, we we survived. Then the new season started, and then when my last six months came up, mm. I Chomo asked wanted us to renew. Mm. And then, I mean, I'd been at the club for three years, three and a half years already, and yeah. I felt, okay, no, it's time to move now. Mm. Um, and again, I think, didn't obviously take too kindly to that. So when you were saying renew the contract, you said, no, I'm not renewing. I said, uh, I'd love to finish the season. My heart is with the club. Yeah. I love the team. It's, it was nothing personal. Mm. I just felt I needed to move, to grow, to go to, you know, yeah. um, to, I needed a different environment. Um, mm. But I wanted to stay because... The, the club was in a bad place. Yeah. It, and again, I was, I was one of the, the top scorers in the team. Mm. Um, you know, and I was doing relatively well for the team. But as a collective, we weren't getting the results. Uh, yeah. And so I wanted to stay. And so I wasn't leaving. And I didn't want it to be a bad parting of ways. Mm. So I said to coach, like, obviously, no, I'd love to stay, but I, I'm not going to renew. I am going to leave at the end of the season. Mm. Um, and then he just said, no, if you're not going to... Because I guess, obviously, the position the team was in, I can't fault him. Mm. Maybe he felt I wouldn't be as committed as, yeah. I needed, as he needed me to be. Mm. Um, so he said, no, if, if you're not going to renew, then it's better you go now. Mm. Um, so he basically said, uh, ask me where I want to go. Mm. It's almost like he's saying, I can, I can help you. Where do you want to go? Yeah. We'll, we'll organize it. And I never thought of leaving the team. Like, I wanted to finish the, te the yeah. season and then we'll It's we'll just that you were not renewing the contract. Yeah, I was just, I was not going to renew. Um, but was the team in the relegation zone? Yeah, we were. We were. Did it cross your mind that I will renew and then we go down, I must go down with this team? It, it didn't. Honestly, honestly, that never factored in my mind. Yeah. I honestly never believed we would get relegated. We were too good to get relegated. Mm. No, like every Cosmos, if you look back at the quality of players at Cosmos, mm. I mean, Jomo is second to none when it comes to spotting talent. True. I mean, every team in the PSL was littered with Cosmos players. Mm. And it's been that way for years. Yeah. Even the team last season that was playing NFD, mm. I still believe that team was a, it was a proper team. Mm. So, but like... Jomo's never shy of players, and he knows he'll get more players. He, mm. he knows talent. He knows where to find talent. Mm. So it never crossed my mind that this team would get relegated. Yeah. So I never, like that thought, honestly, never you know, you, where I was like, ah, no, yeah. I'm not going down with this team. You were, you just, we were just looking for a new environment. I, just, I literally just wanted something different. Yeah. I wanted to move on and play in a, in a different environment, um, different coach, uh, you know, just 
experience something different. Yeah. Um, and it never crossed my mind that the team would get relegated. I wasn't running away from the relegation. Mm. I literally wanted to see it through and I wanted to play out those last six months. Yeah. But um, I can understand, like, you know, as a coach, you ask yourself, okay, maybe you're not as committed to the cause then. And so, unfortunately, that's, that's how it ended. Um, then after he asked you where do you want to go, what did you say? I said, I don't know. I, I yeah. Honestly, I said, <laughs> I never thought about that. Yeah. Like, because I want to finish. I said to him, no, coach, I'd like to finish the season with the team. Yeah. I'd really like to finish with the team. Hmm. And he just said, no, if you're not going to renew, then you, it's, it's better you leave now. Hmm. Um, and so there was no changing his mind in that regard. Um, and so I obviously had to move on. Um, and ish, it was two teams that come in hmm. and they were willing to sign me. Hmm. But Joma didn't want to sell me. Hmm. Again, I'm not sure why, hmm. but they were willing to pay for me. Hmm. But he didn't want, he wanted a loan swap. Hmm. So Vitz came in. Mm. Roger Asa was, uh, I know he was keen on me, um, so they wanted a loan swap. I think Jomo was asking for Bunjira, mm. and Roger's like, no, we, we want to buy the player, why, why do we need, and so that never happened. Swallows, um, yeah. Gavin Hunt, mm. they wanted uh, to buy me, Jomo wouldn't do it, he wanted a loan. I don't, I don't know who it is at Swallows that he wanted, but he tried to get one of their players. Mm. They weren't having it. And then Silver Stars came in mm. and Ishmael Maluleka, yeah. he, he was uh, their player at the time. And so they agreed on a deal where I would go to Silver Stars and he'd come the other way. And then Ishmael went to Cosmos. To Cosmos, yeah. yeah. So it was a loan swap at the end of the day. And that's how I saw out my, my last six months at yeah. Cosmos, basically. And then, but you, you were lucky because usually if, if Jomo knows you sign a pre-contract somewhere, he can decide to freeze you like he did with Anthony Lafour when he, he signed a yeah, pre-contract yeah, yeah, with yeah. Super Sport. Sport. Well. He, he froze him for six months or so. So I did for a week or two. I went to train with the 19s mm. um, until we sorted all that out. So he mm. didn't allow me to train with the first team. Mm. Obviously, we were trying to sort out where I'm going to go to, whatever the case may be. And so I think all this was still new mm. uh, to Jomo. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, like, players never just left or, or unless he released them or whatever or the sell. case may be. be because Jomo, sell, was, Jomo he was recruiting, develop and sell. Exactly. So, or, so players weren't necessarily leaving Cosmos. And I yeah. think it was a bit of a shock. And I think it, it really started with... Uh, with Terminator. Yes. Um, and he, so he now... He lost him for free, Grant Grant. Basically. I and, mean... And he also lost Lafo for free. At the end of the day, and even myself. I yes. mean, he got the loan swap, but I don't know if maybe he thought at the end of that loan I you would come, come back. back. Yeah. I'm not sure, but um, obviously I, I left without them getting anything as well. And then there was also the rule that once you turn 24, hmm. you can't get compensation. Hmm. And I literally turned 24 while I was at um, Silver Stars. Mm. So I thought at that point, they thought maybe they'll, wherever, wherever I go, that they can claim compensation. Mm. And that never happened either. So once you turn 24, you're not going to get any. I think now it's 23. Um, Which is compensation for developing that develop, player? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So even myself, Cosmos never got anything for me. Mm. Um, so I think that was kind of school fees for Braje. Yeah because that was something new in the game where players could just leave and yeah. you know, you'd be free to leave once your contract is done. Yeah. Um, and so ultimately that's, that's how I left Cosmo. And then after your six months at, at Silver Stars then, it, it was, was still Silver, Silver yeah. Stars, what happens then? So I finished off my six months, but unfortunately while I was there, I got injured. So I didn't play. I mean, I know Owen, uh, and it's funny how football is, eh? Mm. Um, you play against the coach, mm and you, you like kind of hurt them. Mm. And then, you know, they have this view of you. But then when I got to, to Silver Stars, um, the way they played was mm. different to how I played kind of thing. So I, it wasn't a great fit. Mm. Um, they were very hard running. Um, you know, like even training is intense. I mean, I think one thing that Owen, the su Owen's success that he's had is based off the, of the back of players who are fit. Mm. like no other team. Mm. So he makes sure he has the fittest team in the league, probably. Mm. And that's how he achieves uh, a lot of his success. 
Um, and so I got injured while I was there. Um, I, I think I pulled my hamstring, so it limited my game time. Mm. So I did play a couple of games. I started a, f a couple, came off the bench a couple of times, but I didn't obviously do as well as I think he would have hoped as well. Mm. Um, and so saw out my contract and then it was basically, I was a free agent. Yeah. Um, and the crazy thing is, uh, my son was born in May. Um, so I was basically without a club. Yeah, unemployed. Come June, yeah, <laughs> unemployed. Um, and so now I had to see, okay, what's the next step? Uh, mm. And I think those last six months, um, I was going to be a father for the first time. And for mm. me, that was a very big deal. And I think that's probably the one thing that kind of took my mind off football or swayed me from football mm. um, nothing I was so football focused um, that it, it never nothing really took my mind or took my mind away from football I think that was the first time anything really made me drift a bit from football mm. um, so my son was born in in May and then my contract uh, I ran out my contract and so it's like okay I'm a free agent now what's the next move mm. but the reality is there's no income Yes. For the next month or two yeah. until I find a club. So we have to make a plan as well. Because uh, it's not like I was earning a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and so I sold my car, I remember. I, mm. I sold my car in that time. Um, you already had a car when you went to, when you joined, after joining Cosmos, you bought a car. Yeah. 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 Um, I was lucky enough, I should say actually, that I got a, a car for my 21st when I turned 21. Yeah. My parents bought me a car. I, okay. It was a Taro Toyota Corolla. Mm. Um, loved that car. Yeah. Everywhere I went, people were after me for that car. Yeah. But yeah, I, I had a car. Um, I sold it when my son was born. Because I, I just bought a house. Mm. I got married um, December, the December before that. Mm. I was 23 when I got married. Mm. Um, and so it was that December prior to that, I bought a house. So obviously now I had a house I had to service. Uh, and then... Uh, my son was coming as well, so I had to, to make ends meet, basically. Yeah. And the funny thing is, where I was staying, I stayed before, while I was waiting for my bond to register, before I moved into my house, mm -hmm. I was staying in a townhouse in Sunning Hill, mm. and Gavin Hunt lived across the road from me, in a mm. townhouse, in mm. the next townhouse complex, literally across the road. Um, and so, while I was at, in that period at Silver Stars, even, or when it was just finishing, Mm. I met up with him and I said to him, look, uh, what's the situation there? Because I knew he'd try to sign me already Yeah. in January when mm. Jomo wasn't trying to, um, to sell me. Yeah. So I said to him, coach, I'm a free agent now. I can come through. And, you know, football being football, he said to me, I, we haven't seen you for six months. You're going to have to come and try. Yeah. So I'm like, do what you have to do, huh? So, so tell me in that six months, because it, it can be a very difficult time when you go six months without income. And it happens in... No, no, months. I didn't go without any income. Oh, you didn't go without income. So, so you are, your contract and the league ends May. Yeah. Uh, other teams, other players will tell me when the season ends, June, you are not getting paid. Some teams do that because you are not working. Some teams, yeah. Yeah. Not all but in your situation, you got paid for end of June. Yeah. Um... I think I did. I, I need to, yeah, no, I think I was, Silver Stars did pay me at that. It, the only time I didn't get paid in the off season yeah. is July. In, at Cosmos. Is at Cosmos. Yeah. Cosmos off season That's is off the season. policy. You are not working. When you are not working, it's. Either your contract is active. In, yeah, I, 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 that's the policy. I don't know how you get <laughs> to that, but that was the policy. I, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's changed now. I'm not sure what the situation mm. is now, but that, that was the policy. Back. Yeah, I've, I've spoke to one player also. He said that Dynamos was the same. Is it? When the league ends in May, until the league starts, you're not getting paid. Because yeah. they say you're not at work. So, I, but what I said was only for the off-season. When the you off get season. to pre-season, then you start, you start, you start getting, getting paid, paid again. again. Yeah. Um, it was literally just, I think, for that month that you're off. And then once pre-season starts, you yeah. know, you're active again. So, so after your loan... And with, with Platinum Stars, it was June. Silver Stars, yeah. Silver Stars, it was June. Yeah. And then Basically, yeah. when does Gavin call you for trial? July so pre or? pre-season. Pre-season. Yeah. Or pre-season. So I went and um, they were having like almost, I wouldn't say open trials. I think they, were, they had the teams. Uh, the team started pre-season. Mm. But I remember when I got there, 
um, for the first week or so, they were playing games because they were assessing players. Mm. Um, so when I got there... Jamestown uh, Stadium. Yeah. It's, the, Swallow, it's with Swallows now by then. Swallows, Derby. yes. They trained in Jamestown Stadium. Not at the stadium, the fields. Uh, jo- uh, what's that? I don't know there, what that is. There is a main there's a there's complex there's where there's a cricket. Uh, so the, y- the yes, main stadium. Yes, there's a main stadium on the left yes, if you are facing east. Yeah. And then on the right is another yard with a lot of fields. Yeah, but uh, over the road, you mean? Across yes. the road, yes. yes. That, that complex there. Yeah. So it's a sports facility. They, yeah. they do cricket and they do other sports there as well. We were training there. So that's where we were training. So that's where I went for preseason. Hmm. Um, the funny thing is Lifa. Mm. Lifa, Tutulupa and I were together at Cosmos. Yeah. So I don't know what happened with Lifa, but we both got to Swallows at the same time. For trials. Basically. I, I don't know if Lifa was, I, I can only speak for myself, I don't yeah. know what his arrangement was. Yeah. But for me, this was basically a trial. Mm. Um, so the first two days we were just playing matches. Mm. Um, but I don't think it was long. Mm. I, I think I, I showed immediately my quality and the whole thing for me is Gavin knew what I'm capable of. Yeah. The only reason for me to come on trial is so that they going to pay me less. Mm. Because now they can say, ah, no, you came on trial, we didn't sign you, we didn't this. Yeah. Honestly, if, if, if I have to Be think honest. about it, yeah. that's the only reason. Because it's not like you, you ne- all you need to know is am I fit? Yes. Because the season, last season, I actually scored against Swallows. Mm. So he knows who I am as a player. We played pre-season match where I, I know I, it's probably one of the best games I've played and he knows what I'm capable of. Mm. The only reason I would feel that you would want me to come on trial is because so that my, I can't demand as much as maybe if I'm yeah. coming from somewhere. You can't demand. You understand, yeah, basically. Because you'll say, hey, we are, we are helping you. We're doing you, you a favor, yeah, yeah. We're giving you a, so. And at that time, you mean you're young, um, so that's how it went. That's how it went. And you just sold your car, now you're going to gym with taxi <laughs> or lift. <laughs> no, I'd leave, my wife had a car, though. Okay. So we had two cars between, uh, between us. So, okay. Um, obviously so after you sold your car, there's still another car. There's another car. My wife's on maternity leave, so yeah. she's, she's not at work, so I'm using her car for the meantime. Yeah. Because um, we were planning on getting another car. Yeah. Um, but I knew, okay, let me just get the contract and we we'll sort ourselves Then you, you out. impress at, at uh, you impress Gavin, which psychologically you knew. He, he knew what nah, he was I knew, about. yeah, it's, it wasn't a difficult thing. I knew that, and it was a good fit. Um, and uh, you know, at Swallow, that training is open. Yeah. Even the supporters were there. Anybody can go Anyone in. can walk in. And the supporters were, they, they, I think they made it very easy because they were very excited. After... Like the first, the first day, uh. some of them were coming to me. Are they signing you? Are they signing you? Like, um, and they even know you're a trialist. You, exactly. <laughs> like they can see. Um, so they asked me already, are you, are you signing? What's happening with you? And I was just like, no, we'll hear from the coach. Yeah. Um, but it went well, man. And so I think it was a couple of weeks preseason, spent the preseason with them. But... For some reason, it was dragging out. It was dragging out. Um, and then Gavin had to leave. Mm. And he had to go and do his assessments or, um, because he was doing his coaching badges in, the, in Europe, his yeah. UEFA badges, I do believe. Yeah. Um, and he had to leave. So he was even going to miss the first game of the season, mm. um, of the league season, because he had to be in, the, in, in Europe. Mm. And so he comes to me and he says, please, I don't want to come back and then I find you gone. Yeah. Make sure that this thing gets done. What I didn't mention is that by then I'd gotten an agent. So even with the whole process of leaving Cosmos, yeah. I didn't know. And I, I wanted my, like I asked my dad, okay, are we going to do this? Are you going to represent me? Then he's like, no, he doesn't know football. Mm. It's better we get someone. Mm. And then like we asked around, asked my uncle, and then he said, okay, there's this guy that's he's starting out. He wants to, you know. Mm. Which was a big mistake, I think. So <laughs> Why are you saying it was a big mistake? No, because um, it's almost like you're doing someone a favor to manage your career. Uh. But if he doesn't know what he's doing, yeah. what's going to happen? Or if he doesn't carry weight in the industry, mm. you, you're hurting yourself in yeah. essence. And so, um, you know, I got an agent, my first agent, basically. But uh, he didn't know what he was doing, honestly. He was, it was trial and error for him. Yeah. So he was... You know, even the way I left Cosmos, I, 
I was told, ah, guy, this, who's this guy that you're sending to us now? <laughs> um, so that was a big problem. And so it's important, the representation that you have. And so he was negotiating with the club. Mm. And then later on, I found out that he was asking for like, st- he, he wasn't asking for stuff we, we discussed. Uh-uh. You know, he was doing his own thing. We discussed something. I told him, this is, I need at least this amount of money, yeah. whatever the case may be. He was doing his own thing. And that's what dragged it out. Uh. And the crazy thing, in that whole process, um, Gavin leaves. And then immediately, as I probably like the next training session after he left, mm. I did my ACL mm. without a contract. Yes. I completely ruptured my ACL at yeah. training at, at Swallows. Now, like, yo. That's, a, that's not a minor do? injury. No, it's, it's a major, major it's a, injury. It's a major injury. So, the team doctor says, okay, ah, he's not so sure. Maybe it's not that serious. So, I'm like, okay, you know, let's, let's see what happens. Icing, whatever, whatever. The funny thing is, so I miss, like, we played a couple of friendlies. I couldn't play. I was still injured. Tried to run on it, jog on it. I could run in a straight line. Mm. At full pace, mm. like no problem, flat out. Mm. But as soon as I try and change direction, your knee just gives way and yeah. then you just fall. So then I knew, but like, I, it was strange to me because I went, they sent me to a specialist and he literally, he took two seconds, he just grabbed my leg and he just did this. He's like, mm. I, six to nine months. Mm. I'm looking at this guy like, ah, man. <laughs> and he's so, you know, he, he's talking about my career, but he's taking it so light. He just yeah. goes, ah, six to nine months. Ooh. I looked at him, I'm like, ah. So he gave the report and everything, but then the team doctor says, no, he's not sure, because I could run in a straight line. Yeah. Because they put me on a treadmill, mm. and I went, pa, 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 full force. Yeah. No problem. But then on the field, when I go and I just try to turn, ah, gone. Mm. That's when I understood now how the, the workings of the knee. Mm. Um, but luckily, we came to an agreement, and then we signed. Mm. Um, while sat, injured? While I was injured. Does it not that compromise your negotiation package? Because no, I think we were kind of talking and we came to an, an arrangement before we found out how serious it was. Yeah. So they, on one thing I must say, um, I think it was Gavin Bernstein was, the, was in charge at the time running the club. Leon mm. was obviously based in Cape Town, but Gavin Bernstein was the guy that was doing the deal. Mm. Um, and they were great in that. Um, I think a lot of clubs would easily, they could have messed me over and said, ah, no, we can't sign you now, you're injured, you know? Yeah. Even though I got injured playing for them or training with them. Yeah. Um, so they were really awesome with that. So, but the funny story about this though, mm. my negotiations were held up and I couldn't understand what was the hold up. Mm. But then they sent out um, the sports and science guys. Mm from Cape Town. They were the only ones really doing it now. They test like the 40 yard and they test, we do the beep test. So we do all these tests to see how fit you are and whatever. So we do that test and then we do, so the 40 yard, what people don't know is always very quick. Mm. And in a lot of the teams I played for, I was one of the, I was always one of the quickest players, but my game never showed that because of my style of play. Mm. But I was always, I was quite fast. Mm. So we did that 40 yard. Mm. So when the results come out, Leon Prince is in, in Joburg mm. and he, we in the, at the training field there, we eat uh, at the restaurant area there. Mm. And he comes to me and he's like, hey, you know, uh, we must get this deal done. Eh? We mm. must get this deal done. Mm. Now I'm wondering like, what's the change now? Uh. All of a sudden he says, no, I was looking at your results. You're as quick as Brett Russell. Eh? Mm. And Brett Russell's a rugby player. Yeah. So he's like, no, I saw your results. You're as quick as Brett Russell. You're almost as quick as Brett Russell. And like, no, we must get this deal done. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what I'm doing on the field. Yeah. Now you want to sign because I'm as quick as a rugby player. Yeah. <laughs> so that was basically the premise of me signing. Like, why the deal now? Okay. They were sure they're going <laughs> to sign me. Because mm. I was as quick as a rugby player. Yeah. So I was just like, I, I, that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, we signed, did the deal, and then um, I had my op, mm. like not long after, I think when Gavin Hunt came back. Mm. So he came back on the day of the game, but he wasn't on the bench. Mm. He was in the stands. Mm. Braveda, Fader Mposho, yeah. 
he was on the bench for the game. Mm. We played at Budvest. I think it was at Wits. Uh, we played against Wits at Budvest. Um, I remember, I think we drew that game. But Gavin was there. So before the game, we had a team meeting. And he comes to me. And he's like, and you? What's happening? I'm like, Ash, ACL. Mm. He's like, then you know Gavin? Yeah. Just, just starts moaning and whatever the case may be. Um, but then, I must say, the club were great about it. Mm. Uh, one thing that happened though is what they asked me to do was waive my sign-on fee mm. because um, obviously I wasn't going to play that season. I was yeah. basically going to be out for that season. Mm. So they asked me to they'll honor my salary and everything, mm. but they asked me to waive my sign-on fee, which I was okay with. Mm. Um, it wasn't a great deal anyway. Mm. Um, so I played, um, I mean, I, I went through the whole rehab phase, recovery. But I, I recovered very quick, so I, I probably, um, I did my open around September mm. and six months, before six months, I was back on the field. Um, now, you know, it's a six to nine month process, yeah. but before six months, I was back on the field training full. Mm. But the doctors were saying, no, you can't play officially until it's six months. Mm. And so literally when we crossed the six month threshold, I was available for selection. So I recovered in... And generally from my injuries, I, I generally recover quite quickly. But I put in the effort. I really worked hard because I wanted to get back. And before the end of the season, I got to play a couple of games. Mm. Um, and I think I did quite well because at the end of the season, then Leon Prince was saying, hey, I think we must renew your contract because the way, like, the way I've been performing, yeah. I might get, you know, someone's going to come knocking soon or whatever the case may be. So then... Um, I think I did a two-year deal and I did like an extended deal, mm. um, but it was it was a tough period. That I think those six months um, was really to get back and um, to fight for my place. It wasn't an easy thing, but what made it great was that it was almost my son was born in that time. So mm. the first six months of his life or seven months, yeah, we bonded very strongly because I was at home. Yeah, um, the first two, three months, you can't really do much after post-op. Um, so I had spent a lot of time with my son and we really got close. Uh, and so that was the blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, but it was a tough period to get back on the field. And um, I, on, I, by the grace of God, I came back and I was good to go, strong as ever. Yeah. And, and this one was still, you closed it with this new agent that he was trying that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the second one also was still him. Or at so one point you felt no. No, like, um, after he did that deal, mm. I never saw him again. After he did the first solos deal? I, yeah. I can't even say, no, we terminated or we did. Yeah. Never. But like, he, got his, he got his share I for closing imagine, the yeah, deal. He did, definitely. So the club will pay him. You, yeah, the club will know. No, but initially, now that's where Swallows were great. And uh, I, Gavin Bernstein in particular was mm. great because... My contract with my agent and not knowing better mm. was that he would get 20% of my salary. Mm. Um, and so when we were doing the deal, mm. we basically discussed that. Mm. And Gavin said to him, no, 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 my players don't pay agents, mm. which was remarkable that he took that on himself. He says, no, my players don't pay agents. Mm. We'll give you an agent's fee and then you're done. Mm. But you're not taking any money from the player. And for the club to do that, Mm. was was amazing and so you ha I have to give credit to to Swallows at the time the way they were the, they were operating yeah um, under with with Kevin Bernstein uh, being the I don't know if he was the C I don't know I don't know what his title was I can't tell you <laughs> but I know he was the guy that did my contract and yeah. I remember sitting in that meeting and he said mm. no my players don't pay agents they don't pay agents fees and so that for me was because I didn't know yeah. any better but, but sometimes I, it puzzles me the agent's roles because if I look at it, you are the one who spoke to Gavin because he's your neighbor to look at you at Swallows. Mm. But this guy, because for me, agents must find job for you, yeah. work for you, yeah. and negotiate. Sure. But you find this deal yourself, Grand Grand. Is that that maybe you were not confident? I got confi the trial for myself. Yes, yeah. you were not confident to negotiate numbers on Yeah, your to own. go into a boardroom and say, hey, we need to discuss figures, yes. whatever, whatever. Yeah. So again, those are school fees that I paid. Uh, yeah. I didn't know better. Yeah. Um, I 
I mean, I could have gone in there with my dad. I should have. That's what I wanted, ideally. Mm. Uh, but my father obviously uh, he felt like he doesn't know the industry or whatever yeah. the case may be. I, sh I should have maybe taken my mom because my mom is, is, is a tough cookie. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, you look back and you're like, those are the mistakes we made. And so I, I didn't have someone that um, credible that mm. I could trust, that I could say, hey, this person has my best interest mm. and they'll go in there and fight for me. Mm. And so, unfortunately, um, those are the realities of yeah. people. And, and those are the things that current players should learn, that sometimes if the person is new, he's as good as taking your father who will say, I don't know much about football, but he's better than this guy who's supposed to be an agent, but because he's also starting. Exactly, yeah. because he would, my father would have my best interest and he would look out for me. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have to make sure whoever is looking after you because there are a lot of guys and you know Everybody has to start somewhere. So I don't want to knock anyone who's trying to come into the game, mm. but the reality is um, Until you've really cut your teeth and still until you've paid your school fees mm. You're a novice yeah. and for you to get into a boardroom with the big guys and and really challenge them It's difficult unless yeah. you've really you know um, you've, paid also your done your, you've also done your research you go there exactly. with information so um, the reality is not everyone out there that says they're an agent, is yeah. a credible agent, is able to do the right things and get you what you're worth or fight on your behalf. Because a lot of times the clubs work, you know, the, the agent will look for his best interest mm. and the clubs will play on that, mm. you know. And so, yeah, players have to be very careful in that regard. Yeah. And I can guess in this case we were lucky because Solos already liked you yeah. and they didn't want to exploit the situation. I think more than that, if a club wants to do the right thing, they will. Mm. And they, they wanted to do the right thing for the players. Because ultimately, for any club, if your player is happy, what's going to happen? Mm. He's going to play well. But if, you're, if your player now at the end of the month, Ish, I have to pay the agent, and I've, you know, now you've... Stress. It's going to affect me on the field. Yeah. So the club knew, and again, um, I don't know how many clubs do that or operate that way, but they knew if my player is happy, we're going to get results from him. Mm. He's going to play well, he's going to perform well. Mm. And that's, that's what they did. So, so now, at Swallows, you eventually played for how long until you leave again? Four years. You finished I, that four years? I played a full four years. Ish. Did you win some trophies yeah. when you were at Swallows? APSA. Was it the APSA or no, the no. Net Bank? The Net Bank and the, with Julio uh, Leia. The one that you beat the uh, tax, tax in the final. Yeah. yeah. So, so Gavin eventually left. What happened for Gavin to left? Did he go to Super Sport? He went to Super Sport. Yeah. That's when he went to and win the immediately. Mm. Yeah. Not even then immediately. Then you, you stayed behind when he left. So I spent two years with Gavin at Swallows. Mm. Um, I mean, I think that's I learned in those two years more than I did my mm. like all the like my football lessons in those two years were was massive. Mm. I remember playing against Black Leopards in Toyando. Yeah. And live TV game, SABC One, I'll never forget this. Um, yeah. 30 minutes, mm. he took me off. 30 minutes? 30 minutes. Mm. I was watching, it was like tennis. The ball was just, I was lost. I can't fall, I was angry, uh. but I was lost. And the good thing though is that he explained to me exactly why. Because he said to me afterwards, like, um, I was watching the game and I couldn't get in the game. And I'm a footballer. I want the ball at my feet. I mm. want to make things happen. And I, I was watching the ball. And then he pulled me off. And after the game, he said to me, hey, it's not always about prettiness. Mm. Those were his words. It's not always about prettiness. When the game is like that and you see today, there's no football being played. What do you do? He says, now you have to react. Mm. Now you have to get stuck in, kick everything that moves, mm. just you fight, you enter the battle because now it's war. Mm. And that was probably the biggest lesson of my career because after that I knew exactly how to handle that and I never found myself wanting like that again because it was difficult, I tell you, because there was even one situation where the ball came and I'm that player when it's a 50-50, I'll get there before mm. and I want to scoop it over. Mm. So I tried to do that and it didn't work. Now it looked like I was jumping out of a tackle. Yeah. Because I want to just flick it over and jump over and get it on the other side. Yeah. But the flick didn't quite work. Now it looks like I'm jumping over, like You're out of a committed. tackle. I'm not getting stuck in. Yeah. I, you know, Gavin doesn't waste time. He took me out and he's like, I need soldiers now. 
yeah. says, when the game is like that, what are you going to do? And you know the great thing about Gavin? He even showed me, he had a book mm. where he rated players mm. every game. So, you know, we would, on and off, we would have discussions. Because then he never got out of me what he wanted. He, and he used to fight with me. And he actually said to me, you say, if I had to choose someone for my daughter, to marry my daughter, mm. I'd choose you because mm. you're a nice guy. You're this, you're that. And he says, but I don't want that on the field. Yeah. I don't need that guy on the field. On the field, I need you to be someone else. Yeah. And so he was frustrated with that with me. And um, so he used to show me. And it, like, I remember he showed me his book. Then there was a game we played against Golden Arrows. And you remember the Golden Arrows that had? Yeah, that was the Sibekos. Zotwanes, yeah. all of them. They were killing everyone. They were knocking the ball. Mm. And he showed, we beat them 1-0. Mm. But we didn't play that day. Mm -mm. We did not play football. We were chasing the ball the whole 90. But we won. Mm. And he shows me his book. He gave me an 8 out of 10 that day. Mm. And in my mind, I did nothing that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he showed me, look, on this game, 8 out of 10. Because mm. you, you had the right attitude. You were chasing. You were working for the team. I did everything. And then there are games where I feel like, you know, I played. And mm. it's like, mm, that day, 6. Yeah. So it gave me a better understanding of you know the requirements. Like it's not always about prettiness, as he puts yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's what the game is asking. What is the game asking? What does the game require? Mm. That's you know when you really show yourself. And so I learned a lot in the two years that Gavin was there. The first season, um, like I said, was the season I was injured for most of the season. I came back, played the the latter part of the season. My second season at Swallows, I was flying. Um, I played. I it was a regular. Um, initially, when the season started, it was that game against um, Le uh, Leopards where, you know, where he wasn't sure, then yeah. benched me a little bit. But then, once I got going, I was like pretty much a regular in the team. And we finished, we lost out on a Champions League spot on goal difference to Silver Stars. Yeah. Where on the last day, we needed to beat Super Sport. Um, and Highlands, uh, Silver Stars were playing. Um, Chiefs mm. and they beat Chiefs 3 0. Mm. We played Super Sport, Super Sport needed a draw mm. to get into the top eight, mm. and so they were just playing, they just parked the bus. Yeah, so we could not break them down no matter what we did, and we literally finished second. I mean, we finished third eight. on goal difference, yeah, so we missed out on Champions League. And this was a season where, when the season started, we mm. were nowhere. I remember we got to December. Um, the fans were asking for Gavin's head. Mm. They, they was like, no, the t he must get fired, whatever, whatever. December came. They said we had, I think, we had three games that December. Mm. They said if we, if we don't get seven points at least, mm. we're not going on a Christmas break. Mm. And then we hit nine points that mm. December. And then from there, we never looked back. We yeah. went the second half of the season. Unbeaten. I, no, no, we lost one game to Sundowns. Mm. We, beat, we literally won game the whole second half of the season that we lost. And then we finished literally just behind uh, to Sundowns, Silver Stars and then us. Mm. Um, so it was, it was uh, a good season. And I think the next season we would have done even better. Should, if Gavin if stayed. If Gavin stayed. Yeah. Gavin didn't stay. Um, there's a lot of stories about why he left. And I don't think he wanted to leave. He was building something at Swallows. Mm. Um, but then, yeah, as fate would have it, he moved on. Yeah. Um, and then he won three back-to-back -back titles immediately after, after leaving after Swallows. Leaving. Yeah. So clearly he knew what he was doing back there. Yeah, he was, I mean, I, I learned a great deal from him. And, and what does it do to players when you've got a coach that believed in all of you and he was building something that you can all see is coming together, then he leaves? Yeah, it, it was a tough one because, and I think um, that's maybe one of the reasons why the incoming coach was Ian Garoa mm. and uh, his assistant was Innocent Mayoyo. Mm. Um, it was difficult uh, off the back of that to come in and replicate that. Um, you know, I think they probably should have tried to build on that, but they came in and kind of just changed everything. Mm. And now when, you know, the players have kind of found their way and learned how to do things a certain way um, it was starting afresh and I mean when you finished as did as well as we did in the league mm. I mean we were actually contenders um, now to start fresh and then it was always going to be difficult uh, so 
for the group it wasn't great and um, I think maybe the approach of the coaches at the time mm. and there were still young coaches as well um, I think maybe they got that wrong as well yeah mm. then the Brazilian coach comes through yeah language issue no no he no. was good with his English his English was was good enough uh. but football is a universal language yes so you'll always, if you, I mean, the fact that he could speak English, even if you don't, if there's a language barrier, yeah. football speaks it's for itself. Yeah. So he could speak English. So there was no language issues. There was, who had, uh, the, the one who had a tough time was his um, the fitness trainer. Yeah. Jaffe, Borges. Yes. He, he, he struggled. Um, so he learned English. He didn't speak English at all, but he's amazing. Hmm. Um, that's probably the best uh, fitness, like, Everything we achieved was off his back, and people don't realize this, but Pirates' double treble mm. coincided with him moving from Swallows to Pirates. To Pirates, yeah. And he has a big role to play in that, and I don't think he got the credit he deserved. Yeah. But that man was outstanding. I, he was just phenomenal. Because when Leal moved from Swallows, he went to Pirates. Yeah. And he went with him. I, I do believe so, yeah. I yeah, when, I think when Leal left, there uh, came uh, Kron. Yeah. Then that guy stayed, I think. The yeah, was Jaffe there. was there. Was Jaffe there. was a part of that whole thing. So yeah. he's, I mean, he's done for now. He's, he's amazing. So yeah, at Swallows, I mean, he came in. But Leal never struggled with, with, uh, with the language. He could speak, uh, you know, good enough to, for us to understand him. And, you know, we had a few clowns in the team who would always mimic the coach. Yeah, he but looked too soft to be... No, 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 no. Isn't that man wasn't soft. He was a professional. Yeah. He instilled a sense of professionalism. Mm. Um, so I would say probably the two coaches that I learned the most from and that I probably benefit the most from is Gavin Hunt and Julio Leal. Mm. Um, but I, of all the coaches I played for, no one believed in me mm. as much as Leal did. Mm. Leal actually took the time to get the best out of me. Mm. And no other coach that I played for did that. Yeah. And that's why that season um, was probably... The season people remember me most for at um, Swallows. At Swallows, my last season at Swallows when we won the Net Bank Cup, hmm. um, a lot of people will refer to that year um, and how I played in that season. The funny thing is, I was 28 years old. Hmm. How often do you hear of a 28-year-old winning the Most Improved Player? Uh, very rare. I won Most Improved Player at Swallows that, that, for in that, that season. season. Yeah, and that's because of Leal. Mm. because he believed in me and so when every other coach didn't take the time because they knew what I was capable of but they didn't take the time to read it's like and it's difficult when you're coaching because you have a whole team to focus on mm. um, and so to try and get the best out of one player it's almost like a way you know it's like at that level you you can't be um, babysitting babysitting yeah you know and so I I'm at fault for that mm. I never um, played to my full potential and I can't fault coaches for not investing the time to, he's the one who did. Mm. And that's why that was probably my best season as a professional. Um, he, you know, one of the compliments he paid me, he said to me, because at training I was phenomenal. Mm. You know, I was unfortunately, they say there's players who, who at training they rubbish. Mm. But on match day you see them. Yeah. I was the other way around where yeah. at training I was always, I was, Buzzing. Buzzing. I was yeah. the superstar. Yeah. But then come match day, then it's like, ish. Um, then I shrink. Mm. And so I think that's an, an issue a lot of coaches, of uh, the coaches I played for had with me. Um, but he was one who, who took the time and he said to me, you do things with the ball that I've never seen mm. and I'm Brazilian. You know, that's, he said that to me and he said to me, I need that. I need you to be constantly doing that. Um, and he gave me the, the liberty to really express myself and to, to try and play to my full potential. So um, I value that. And he's, he, he played a big part in me actually just, you know, stepping up my game a bit. And so um, he was important in my journey. Yeah. So you enjoyed your football under him? I definitely did. He, he literally, he gave me so much freedom. And I was able to express myself um, I, I was, like you said, I was a nice guy, so I didn't want to upset anyone. Mm. So I didn't try anything because I didn't want to lose the ball. I didn't want to risk anything because for fear of, um, you know, the coach or the, yeah, my teammates, the team, yeah. uh, things like that. But he gave me the liberty. He says, hey, do what you need to do. Mm. And then I had, uh, at some point, Goodman Mazubuko, 
He said to me, hey, yeah, 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 I can't do what you do. Mm. So me, I'll mark. Mm. You do your thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you need those kind of characters around you. And so that definitely helped a lot. Then you on the move again. You leave Solos. So in between there, um, so w when we just finished the NetBank Cup, yeah. I went to LA Galaxy. Mm. Um, so I went on a trial. Mm. Basically, mm. they'd seen a video um, and they, they wanted me to come out. They were interested in me. Mm -hmm. No, let's go. So we, I went there um, in the off season. Yeah. It was in the middle. So the MLS season runs like January to December, basically. Yeah. So when our season ends, it's basically mid-season for them. Yeah. So we won the NetBank Cup. So now I had to apply for visas, all these things. Once it was sorted, I went over, trained with them, and I did. I think I did quite well because they wanted to sign me. Mm. But there was a salary cap issue. So because they have the cap, even though they have money, they can't use it. Mm. So they what they were offering me... I mean, I was 28, mm. I had a wife, two kids, my family. Um, it was, I couldn't move for that kind of money. Was um, it less than what you were earning here in the country? No, no, it was more than what I was earning. But, but not it was enough less, to... No, it was less than the offers I was getting. Yeah. So it, it was literally less um, than what I was getting at Swallows. Mm. I mean, it was more than what I was getting at Swallows. Mm. But because of the season I had, mm. teams were coming in. And uh, there was there was interest, yeah. And so I, I obviously, well, that probably says how little I was getting paid at Swallows. Mm. Um, but teams were now interested in me, and so the offers I was getting, um, they couldn't. Not that they they didn't have the money. The league rules wouldn't allow them to pay that more man, than what. Yeah. Um, so at that time, I think LA Galaxy were offering me six thousand mm. dollars, but the rand exchange was uh, eight. Mm. One to eight, mm. so that's forty-eight thousand rand. Mm. It's before um, before housing, before tax, all that kind of thing. So it wasn't a lot of money. No, there's no way you can relocate um, yeah. and move on that kind of money. So um, it just it didn't work. And I mean, it was an amazing opportunity. I would have been teammates with David Beckham and you know some top players, Landon Donovan. Mm. But at the end of the day, I had to think about, you know, what's, what's best for the future. And um, yeah. I wasn't going to be able to, to survive off that. And so I came home, back to Swallows, mm. started preseason. Um, Leal, for some reason, got fired mm. after we won the Net Bank Net Cup. Bank. I have no idea why. Um, you guys didn't see it coming? No, I mean, I didn't understand. We just heard that he's not coming back. Mm. I can't tell you. I mean... We didn't finish, we finished outside the top eight in the league when the early season we were contenders. Mm. Um, I think the media had a big role to play in that. Mm. Um, and the media needs to be wary of how they deal with players. And, um, and so the media divided our squad. In literally. which way? Um, so do you remember Bengo, Ace Bengo? Yeah. So he played and scored two goals against Chiefs. This is not what divided. Yeah. Um, and they messed him up, I think. Mm. Because he, he just started. Next thing is the next Benny McCarthy. Mm. He scored two goals against Kaiser Chiefs. So mm. he's the next Benny McCarthy. Then there was media training. Everyone just wanted a piece of Ace Bengo now. Mm. And that kind of, for me, it distracted him. It, you know, it, it was too early. Yeah. Give him a chance to grow into his ability. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, that's what happened. And then I remember one big thing because we even had a massive meeting and our team was never quite the same after um, an interview that came out of Sandy Lent Lovo, AK-47. Yeah. Um, he had an interview where... And again, you know, it's that way, sensationalism in the media where... They were asking him about South African strikers, why they don't um, score enough goals. And then he ended up saying, like, if he was playing with better midfielders, mm. he would score more goals. Then he actually mentioned, like, uh, Teko Modise and, you know, Skakane and all these, he, you know, players that he, he probably would have done better if he was playing with. And literally, at that point, that, I mean, we were literally top three at mm. the time. And that divide because now it's like ah so what are we you don't believe in us you know what i mean teammates. and so that that was literally a a, a de defining moment in our season 
mm. because now it's like are we playing for one another mm. um, and it, it only until the net bank cup did we really regroup and come together as a unit mm. um, but our, our league season just fell apart because I remember there was a, a point we went five matches in a row that we won mm. um, and then we went on a spell where we lost five consecutive matches and then we just plummeted and it was difficult to recover our league season. And so, yeah, I mean, we didn't do great in the league, but we won the Net Bank Cup. And um, in my mind, Leal, you know, it was, again, I think the team would have benefited off him coming back, but it wasn't to be. And then I came back from, from the U.S., started preseason with Swallows, wanted to see what's going to happen now, started negotiating because my contract was up. Mm. Um, and then people were coming with offers and the one offer I got took to the management and said look this is you know what we're getting and I was flat out just told no you're lying mm. like I don't believe this mm. and I was told if this is true mm. you can go simple as that there's no way we can match this one not it, no because maybe they felt I wasn't worth that yeah but that's how I left Swallows like management literally said, if this offer is true, mm. you can go. And I still had a, a one year option on my contract. Mm. So. By then, who's, 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 who's training the team? Who's in the coach? Please. Zeka, Zeka Max. It's Zeka. Yeah, Zeka was uh, Leal's assistant. assistant. yeah. And so he was coaching the team. I think that's uh, just before Zobel came in. Yeah. So uh, Zeka was coaching the team. But I mean, I never had conversations with Zaka about that. The coaches don't get involved in those conversations. Mm. That was literally just with management. So even if the coach goes to management and says, no, I need this guy in, my, in our team this season, if the management says we can't afford, they can't afford. I don't even know if we got there. I don't even know like, if the coach was consulted. I don't think the coach was consulted on that. Mm. It was just like a decision, look, if this is true. Yeah. But, but percentage-wise, Mark, from the current deal that we had, vis-a-vis what this other club was put on the table, was it huge? You mean the difference? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was astronomical, to say the <laughs> least. Um, I, 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 like, you know, it was, let's see, that was big, it was big. Yeah, the difference was huge. It was maybe three or four times Sure. The difference is literally, I worked it out. And so I, I speak about this very openly. Mm. Um, I, I worked out my average salary mm. for the first eight years of my career. Mm. My average salary for the first eight years. So I'm talking my four years at Cosmos, mm -hmm. my four years at Swallows. Mm. My average salary for those years was 12 and a half thousand rand a month. Mm. For, eight years for eight years of a... 12 year career mm. so 12 years i played which is above average i think mm. um if you if you played 10 years ten. plus you've done well yes you've done exceptionally well so i very played, few players play 10, 10 you understand so i was above average but for the first eight years of a 10 of an average 10 year career mm. i earned 12 and a half thousand rand a month that's my average mm. literally i mean what what do you that's not money no that's for a career that's, that's, that's going to end tomorrow. Yeah. So it was, and that's why, you know, you look back and you, people mustn't tell me about loyalty, players' loyalty. Mm. Um, there is no loyalty in football. No. There's no such thing. That word doesn't exist. And so everyone ultimately has to do what's best for them. And so I didn't want to leave Swallows. I was hoping when we come and say, you know, I wanted to be a Swallows legend. I wanted yeah. to... I could have finished my career there, whatever the case may be. Mm. So I'm hoping, okay, there's the offer, let's discuss. Mm. So there was no discussion. There wasn't even, let's try and meet you. Okay, we can't quite get there. Because maybe I would have accepted a little less. Yeah. But because I'm set, yeah. I'm a key player, I'm vice captain of the squad. You know, we, we're on a good path. Mm. Mm -mm. And this team B, did they know? What package you were on before presenting? I don't this? know. I don't know. And you've I got a know. new agent by now? Yeah. Yeah. I had two agents in between. So yeah. already I had an the initial. Trial, the trial list the, the, is gone. Yeah, the trial list is gone. 
Then I got a second agent yeah. who negotiated my, my renewal. At Swallows. At Swallows. Yeah. Um, and then, but we fell out. Yeah. And then by the time my, um, my, my time at Swallows was ending, mm. I got a new agent. That's actually the agent who uh, opened the, the door for Galaxy. Who yeah. Created that opportunity. So he's the one who um, was able to make that possible. Yeah. So that's a new agent. So even this agent now is the one who went to, to VITS basically. Yeah. And to the other so because team. the team from Swallows was VITS. And we're going from to Swallows to VITS. Yeah. yeah. So, but we were negotiating with other teams as well. I, Swallow, I, Pirates at the time under Rude Kroll. I know Rude Kroll was a, a, a fan of mine. Mm. Rude Kroll wanted to sign me. Mm. Um, if I'm being honest, I think I was scared of, of Pirates. Yeah. I, and again, we speak about self-confidence. And yes. when I look back at my career, I look at the mistakes I've made. Um, I was afraid of, of, of going to Pirates. Mm. And so um, I opted for the safe option, mm. if I can say that. So I know that Pirates were very interested uh, with other clubs as well. Mm. But the crazy thing, there's one of the other clubs... It was never said who they are, yeah. but one of the big clubs was also interested, mm. but they didn't want to work with my agent. They didn't prefer the agent you were working with at yeah. the time. So they literally sent another agent, not sent, I got a call, I was driving, I remember driving with my wife, mm. um, and this guy says, look, one of the big clubs are interested in you, I'm mm. not going to say who, mm. but I knew who it was, it was mm. obvious. Mm. Um, but they don't want to work with your agent. Mm. So we need to, let's talk, how can we, you know, they, they really want you. Um, but then, I, loyalty. Yes, because you are loyal to this agent. I said, no, um, I mean, this is my agent, what can I do now? Mm. I, you know, I, this is who I work with and I was loyal to my agent. Mm. Maybe again, naive of me. Mm. So I didn't even, we didn't even enter that. We just left it at that. I said to the guy, no, I'm going to stick with my agent. So whoever, if they want to deal with me, they must speak to my agent. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, those were the options I had. Um, but I chose the safe option because at WITS, um, they were also going to pay for me to study. Mm. Um, at WITS, I was going to be able to, to, to have the opportunity to, because by then I'd learned, okay, I need to be doing more than just football. Mm. So You must prepare now. Yeah, I'm 28 <laughs> now. Yeah, I need to start, you know, looking beyond. And so the Vitz deal happened, and um, first time you are earning serious money now. At Vitz, yeah, as I a mean, football in South yeah. Africa, and yeah. late in your career. Exactly, I'm 28 now. Mm. Um, and so, even when you say serious, compared to what I was earning, yes. it was serious. Mm. So I've told people, even teammates. Mm. that I've played with at Swallows. Mm. They know the player I was for Swallows. Mm. And I think my importance to Swallows at that time, mm. my value. Um, and when I told them what I was earning, mm. they don't believe me. Mm. They laugh at me. Mm. They literally lie. And they're like, no, there's no way. I mean, at that point, I was like, like I said, I was vice captain of the team. I, I played a big role in us winning the Nedbank Cup. You know, like I was, I was a pivotal player in yeah. the team. You were the guy to go to. You understand? Yeah, I, I, when the lineup comes out, we scan your name. You, you are there. We I think I was one of those guys. But when I tell people what I was earning, yeah. they don't believe me. And so, like, when you say serious, it's compared to, that's why I said compared to what, what I was. You, you know, mean? even the Brazilians that came, uh. the one boy, uh, because he knew my, who I was in the team. Yeah. And then when he heard I was leaving, he was upset with me. Uh. I'm Vinicius De Silva. Yes. I don't know if you remember. I remember. The centre back. Yeah. I think it's the one who scored in the final. In the yes, final. he scored the winning goal in the final. Yeah, and he's upset now. It's like to him, it's like, ah, why are you mm. leaving us? You know, because mm. I went. I remember on the last day because I had to just finish June. My contract ends, so I stayed until June, mm. July, first of July. I went. So mm. on that thirty-first or thirtieth, whatever it is, I went and I greeted all the guys. And this guy's like, no, what's going on? And then I told him, hey, man, they don't want to, you know. Huh? And then he's like, no, but you're earning big money. You're a big player. I said to my friend, I'm not earning <laughs> money. Here. And then, you know, I even showed him my, you know, when you get the, 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 the message from the bank yeah. for your salary. Yeah. I showed him my message. Uh. 
and then I had to uh, convert it to dollars for him yeah. because they were earning dollars. Yeah. And I converted it for him, <laughs> and he, his face just changed. Like <laughs> I'll never like the look on his face. He could not believe it because all of them were earning more than I did. Mm. Those players that the four Brazilian yeah. players that came in were mm. all earning more than I did. And he just, and I think even double what I was earning. Yeah. He couldn't believe it. He looked at me and it was like, then like, it was like, ah, okay. You can go. I understand. It's better yeah. you go. Because that was ridiculous. And, and Matt, that's the perception which even fans think. Once they see you a regular, you are a key player, he's any. They don't know. I mean, even if your teammates get shocked that you are not any, what about an ordinary fan who's there? And then tomorrow, when they look, they say, no, that guy, he, he ended a lot at Swallows. Money, yeah. yeah, he achieved at Swallows, waste his money. So that's what the reality, and I always say to players, um, why, wh to, to fans even, why do they think the league, why is it not public knowledge what players are? You know, there's a site like uh, the MLS yes. in the US, you can, there's a site you can go on mm. and you can see each player mm. exactly what they earn. Mm. Um, cause I did that when I was there and I could kind of measure and see who's earning what. And then I realized actually it's going to be tough for me to, to go there, mm. um, because of the salary cap, but there's all this speculation and there's so much false reporting in the media yeah. that people don't realize people just digest everything. The media tells them mm. they must scrutinize these things. What's mm. put out there in the media, the figures, why is it only certain players that you hear these figures. Hmm. What about the ordinary Joe that's never played for um, Chiefs, Pirates, Sundowns, Super Sport, whatever the big, yeah. you know, the so-called big playing clubs. Yeah. What about those guys? What do you think they're earning? The reality is th there's no South African footballer who has played only in South Africa hmm. who can retire after playing football in South Africa. It's not a thing. What is retirement? Retirement is where you now, you're done Sit. working, you relax, yeah. your money, you've got enough money to take care of you, you don't have to work again. Yeah. There's not a single one. Mm. Some players earn less than people who are going to work until they're 65. Mm. So those are realities. Unfortunately, that's what we don't want to speak about, but those are the realities. And that's why players, um, it's on us. Mm we need to take ourselves more seriously. No one's going to take us serious if we don't take ourselves seriously. And at this point, um, it's difficult. It's difficult because even players don't want to hear these things. Mm. Um, they don't want to hear that your career is going to end. Yeah. And there is a life after your career. So those are the conversations we need to have. Yeah. And, and that's what we hope to achieve with this, to say, let's, let's educate, let's put the information out there because if, if we don't know, Will, will have a perception. Even an, a, a young guy who's coming up, he will just think, I'm going to play football, I'll make money. Because footballers' lives, it's looked at, okay, there's money. Mm. It looks like, because the lifestyle, it's, yeah. you, you, you're in the game, you know, the, the, the dress code, the cars, the lifestyle is that of people who are moneyed. So I think, and we're to blame for that, a mm. lot of times, footballers. So I think footballers also need to realize that, um, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, do not conform to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hmm. So when you conform to the ways of the world, you do what the world does. Hmm. And unfortunately, of, of, of us as footballers, we buy into that way. We see the lifestyle of footballers globally. Hmm. And we almost want to emulate that. But there's no comparison. Hmm. You can't compare yourself to someone who's, at a top team in Europe or yeah. whatever the can be. I mean, the money that they're earning at the top clubs, it doesn't compare. It, you know, it doesn't balance. So you can't be having three, four, five cars, whatever the case may be, um, like they do over there where they yeah. choose which car they're going to drive today. Th that's not our reality. So mm. why are we trying to present that? Why are we trying to, you know, give that off? The realities are that you are going to have to work after you play football so i used to hate as a player when people say but what if you get injured mm. that's not even the story i don't even, I'll, I'll never say that to players because i hated it as a player like mm. why are you wishing you know mm. that's not the reality that we must look at mm. because it is a reality you could get injured and not yeah. be able to play again in what you do mm. we know that that but with technology being what it is 
there are, there are very few injuries right now mm. that you can't recover from. Mm. I mean, the injury I had, ACL, mm. 10 years before me, mm. your career was done. Yeah. You know, how much more now? I mean, ACL now, it's, it's a serious injury, but yeah. it's not a defining way your career is done, whatever. You'll recover. There's, there's no injury. I don't know of any injury where you can't come back from. Yeah. But the reality now that we have to look at is if you're lucky, hmm. you'll play till you're 35. I always, I'm just going to use 35 as the, the middle ground. Yeah. So if you play till you, let's say you started at 20, hmm. you play till you're 35. Now we know, we know that this is generous hmm. because a 15 year career hmm. is very few people, like there's a select group hmm. um, that reach 15 years. So that's even being generous. Hmm. So if you've played for 15 years, you retire, you're done, 35 years old. Hmm. Normal retirement age is what? 60. 60, hmm. 65 even. Hmm. So now, you're 35. <laughs> what are you going to do until you're 60 or 65? So that's 25 yeah. to 30 years. Mm. What are you doing now? So if you're only playing football, you're going to retire. You're injury-free. You've done well. You've played at the top clubs. You've, you've done well. Mm. You're 35. You still have to retire. Football's going to end. As a footballer, you are going to stop playing. Yeah. That's the reality. You can have a successful career or not. Mm. But at 35, average, you're done. Yeah. You still have to go until you're 60 Another or 65. Stage. Yeah. That's 25 to 30 years. Mm. What are you going to do for 30 years? For the next 30 years, of 30 years of your life, what are you going to do? It's a problem. And that's the, the reality we need to show, like footballers especially. So you can have a successful, you can play. Mm. But what do you do for the next 30 years once you're done playing? That's what we need to look at and... Even before we start, we need to be already thinking about that. Mm. And that's the culture we need to uh, start bringing in, especially with our young footballers. Because we want you to have a successful career and achieve great things, but there is still the reality of after football yeah. that we need to think about. Now, you are at Bitvest Vets. You play... Um, you signed for how many seasons? Was it four years? Four years. I signed four years. Four years. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't play all of it no. before going to Super Sport. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Again. Yeah. The realities of football. Mm. Um, so when I came in, I, I think I started like a house on fire. Um, I scored on debut against Chiefs in the MTN 8. Mm. We lost 2-1, or I think 2-1. Um, and then I, I had a really good season. I played well. I always showed, you know, uh, what I was capable of. I still, I think I underachieved again. Mm. But in my first season, I was joint top scorer. Mm. I scored 11 goals in my first season, joint top scorer with Cardi. Yeah, Calvin Cardi. Calvin Cardi. Yeah. Um, I think guys, seven in the league, four in cups. We won the Net Bank Cup that year. Mm. So I won back to back Net Bank Swallows, and then when I moved to Wits, I won it with Wits. Yeah. It, was it the one that was played at FNB? We opened FNB, FNB Stadium. Yeah, against Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, played, I good. played every single game mm. that season. So league and cup. Mm. I was a part, so I didn't start every game, but I probably started 80%. Mm. But I was fit. Again, another uh, Zach van Yerde, mm. to give him credit. He's mm. also a sports scientist, did amazing work. Again, it was great to have two back-to-back, Jaffe at Swallows and mm. then Zach at, at Wits. Yeah. Um, fitness people underestimate the importance of the, the, if you're in good condition, you can perform. If you in tip top shape, you can perform. You can be a top player who's half fit mm. and then have an average player who's in a good shape, in great shape. Yeah, I guarantee you that average player is gonna yeah. dominate this quality player. Yeah, so imagine if you are a, a quality player and you're fully fit, mm. you're like at the top of you, no one's gonna touch you. So, um Fitness is an important thing and players need to start taking more responsibility in that regard as well. Mm. Where you take 
as much as you're getting the team does what they do, if you can put in the extra work and make sure that you're on top of your game in terms of your fitness, mm. you're only helping yourself and you're only benefiting yourself. And there's not a culture of players looking after themselves, mm. doing extra work, willing to invest even their own money to pay someone to, 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 to do extra work, get a fitness trainer, uh, you know, go and see a biokineticist, a sports scientist, whatever, mm. to pay extra money where you just ask someone, okay, we're doing this much at training, mm. what can I do to give me the edge? Mm. Not enough players are doing that mm, and it yeah. will be a great thing if we can change that. But that first season, played every single game because I was fit, mm. I was healthy, I was strong, um, literally, um, net bank up, run, everything went well, and I think I had a great season. Mm. And then my second season, I started three games. The mm. whole season. The whole season? Only started three games. Sure. But I, I, I couldn't tell you what, what you I did wrong. Or same coach? Same coach. But new players arrived? New players did arrive. Um, but literally, my second season, I started three games. Mm. And still, I scored four goals. Um, yeah, I scored four goals um, in that season. But I only started three games the whole year. Mm. Like you say, for me, it was as well. Like, same coach, not much had changed. Yeah. Can't explain it to you. And how uh, mentally, what does it do to you? Stress? So Worried? I've always lived my life to honor God. Mm. And if it weren't for God in that period, I don't know how I would have, you know, God almost showed me the bigger picture. Mm. Um, and so I remember in my first season when I came there, the coach made a lot of noise about signing me. Mm. For him, it was like this big signing. And he always made me uncomfortable because it's like, the players around me. There were other players who were signed as well, but he made such a big deal of the fact that I'm there. And, um, you know, you don't want that. And especially me who wants to kind of, I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. And I don't. So he made it very uncomfortable even for me because now the players are like, ah, but I mean, it's just another player. Why are we making such a big deal? Yeah. Um, but anyway, that being said, like, I think my lifestyle as well, mm. it's almost like, um, to a degree, you, 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 it's like you feel you're better than everyone else. Mm. This, you know, I don't do certain things and I'm not just, you know, operate like everyone does. Um, so even my lifestyle maybe offended certain people. Mm. Um, and that was fine. I did well. I had a reasonably successful season. And then when things changed, mm. it was almost like God was testing me now. Because the Bible, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Because mm. that's the verse God gave me in that time. So now I'm going through this now. What separates me from everyone else? What makes me different from everyone else? Mm. Because now you're going to go through hardship. Are you going to respond like everyone else? Or are you going to be who you've said you are? Because mm. I presented myself a certain way. And so, are you true to who you've said you are? And the one day that it just, it all came together for me mm. was when one of my teammates came to me and he said to me, um, because I was struggling at that time. Mm. I was really struggling and I was like, Lord, but I've, I've done everything and I've lived to honor you. And why? This feels so unfair. Why am I being, you know, yeah. treated like this? And one of my teammates came to me and he said to me, he says, he asked me, where do I go to church? Mm. And then he said to me, I think I must start taking my family to church. Mm. And this didn't come when I was doing well. Mm. This came when I was doing, when things were rough for me. Yeah. Because everyone was kind of like, hey, why is he not playing? Or what, did he offend the coach? Mm. But my conduct didn't change. Mm. And the way I, 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 I conducted myself at training, I didn't go on a rant and I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't be, I wasn't a prima donna. Yeah. I still... The same way I was when things were great for me, mm. I tried to live my life the same way. Mm. So I was still the joyous person. I was still, you know, living my life a certain way. And when he said that to me, 
it just everything clicked for me and I was like it was worth it mm. it was worth every moment of uneasiness where I wasn't sure what was going on and it just it changed my outlook altogether and so there's a bigger picture there's always a bigger picture mm. and that's what I learned from that and so um I know I think I deserve to have been playing um maybe the coaches will feel differently whatever we've never had the discussion but yeah. um there was a bigger picture and I I I finally got it mm. in that moment and I I thank God for that mm. so it wasn't easy but it 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 made sense in the end yeah but but when that situation happened you never uh, get frustrated to say I'm studying nightlife I'm studying no, no, drink no. I like I, I, one okay. of one of the things I'm most proud of um um, you know the stereotype around colored males. Yep. Um, we like the bottle or whatever. Mm. I'm 41 years old now, and I can honestly say that I've never been drunk a day in my life. Mm. I've tried to live, and like I said, I've always tried to live my life to honor God. I've made plenty mistakes. I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, and I don't profess to be. I'm human. I've got my faults. I've I've got my vices. Um, but that was one of them that I I never struggled with. So nightlife and whatever it was never an issue for me. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like I missed anything. I didn't need to be out there. Um, I got married at the age of 23. Mm. Um, so my wife and my kids were everything to me, um, and they were my you know my sounding board. And so I if if I wasn't playing football, being at home, mm. I wasn't feeling uh, I wasn't getting itchy feet. I was happy to be home with my family. Yeah. So when I wasn't traveling like I wasn't in the squads now, I wasn't in the teams, I wasn't playing. I was spending time with my family, so I was okay. Stay at home and watch teammates on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Then that second season three starts, third season comes. Yeah, third season now it's like okay, what's going on? Um you know, then I thought okay, things might change let me uh, you know push myself keep fighting i always still believe that i was good enough to play mm. um and you know it, it it's it's the worst when your teammates feel sorry for you mm. it's like when your teammates look at you like you know we know you should be playing but yeah. like what's going on um and then then you you get to a point where you realize it's beyond your control you can only do so much and then so i I literally I started that season. I don't know how many games I played, but I did uh I was in the team for a couple of games. And the funny thing is I was only thrown in when we were down. Mm. So, I'll be on the bench and if we're losing, I'll go on. But if we if the game's going well, I wouldn't go on. Mm. Um so I made a couple of appearances off the bench. But then I realized, okay, look, maybe my time is up um and then that January I went on loan. Mm. So um I said to my agent okay look let's see what's out there what's happening. Um but I didn't want to leave Joburg. Mm. So I wanted obviously to stay and try and play for a team still that's in 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 Joburg in Gauteng. Mm. Then Cosmos came. Mm. So I went I went on loan to Cosmos in that period. Mm. Um so it was literally January to May to try and help them mm. um stave off relegation. Um it was a tall order cuz you know the team was obviously struggling and I I went and it didn't work out. I mm. mean we didn't save relegation. Mm. Um but I think I had a relatively successful time there. And again <sighs> Sure. Mm. In my time there Yeah. And this is God again. Yeah. This is not me and I always say I want to make this I've never shared this like on a you know I've spoken to people about it. Mm. Um but again I honor God mm. for that because um there's a lot that you know that happens in football and you know there's people have their own beliefs and whatever and obviously I have my belief Mm. And so my one of my um conditions of going to 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 Cosmos on loan mm. was that I I won't compromise my beliefs. I want to follow, you know, what I believe. Mm. 
Mm. So we won't go too deep into that. But because I took that stance, mm. because I said, look, I have my belief and I'm the, you know, honor, honor God in what I believe and um, I got injured in that time, unfortunately, so I missed a couple of games in that period that I was there. Mm. Um, so I had two separate injuries. One was a bad tackle mm. where like, I nearly broke my leg. Mm. Um, the other one was a muscle injury. Mm. So I think every time I got injured, I probably missed like three games at a time. Mm. But I played every other time when I was fit, I played. Mm. And because of the stance I took for God, mm. we never lost a single game I played in. Mm. Uh, I, I remember I scored on debut. My debut when I went, uh, when I went back to Cosmos in that period was against Chiefs. Mm. I scored, we drew 1-1. One, one. My mm. second game was against Sundowns who were like buzzing at the time. We drew 0-0. Zero, zero. Mm. I remember I played against Wits. I don't. They didn't put in the clause that I can't play against them because I was on loan. Mm. We beat them 1-0. I got the assist on the night. I got man of the match. Mm. Um, and then in the cup, we had a good, decent cup run as well. One, two, a couple of games in the cup. But the reality, I never, I never lost a single game in the time I went on loan to Cosmos that season. And if you go back into the record, you can check that. Um, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, they lost every game I didn't play. Mm. And again, it's not me. Yes. I'm not saying it's because I wasn't on the field. That yeah. But it's the stance that I took. I know that for sure. Mm. And I honor God because of that. Because he vindicated my decision mm. to take a stance for him. Mm. And that's, that was the result of that. Mm. Getting deep now. It's getting hectic. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I, 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 I tap into your belief. And uh, I understand it very well. But at Jomo... Jomo consult a lot. Every player who plays for Jomo will tell you when it gets hectic, you'll even go to Swaziland to get yeah. a special help. Were you, was it not contradicting with your belief? But that's why I say, that's what the stance that I took, hmm. is that I have my own belief, so I will follow my belief and I'm not going to partake or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I'll stick to what I believe. Yeah, and Jomo was okay. And that was the condition we agreed on and it was fine. Okay. So we went that how we went through that six months, I guess. Yeah. So that that loan six months ends, you still have a year at Bitvets Vets. Yeah. Because you were on your third year when you go to loan. When you go back to Bitvets Vets, it's still the same structure? Yeah. Now what happens? Are they giving you a chance or No, I, I didn't um so coming into that preseason, I already knew that uh, we, we were looking for, for a move elsewhere. Mm. Um, because, I mean, obviously I'd seen, I've seen the story and how it was playing out. And that there were still there were new signings that were coming in. Um, so it was clear that I, I didn't really have a place. Mm. Um, so I spoke to my agent and, you know, obviously he was looking around and um, super sport came in with interest mm. so a lot of people thought it was a loan move mm. but they basically bought out my contract my contract mm. if i'm being honest i don't even like as far as i know it was um it wasn't a loan move mm. um because then at some point someone even said it was like a swap because Bryce Moon went the other way. Mm. But I was training with Bryce Moon for a good couple of weeks. Um, but again, those negotiations, how the clubs agree, I, I'm not sure what the clubs agreements were. But for me, I knew that I'd, I'd moved to Supersport and it was an outright. I had no, no attachment to Bedvest after that. Mm. So um, my last season as a professional was at Supersport United. Then when you went to Supersport, you you go and negotiate a new deal now, or they just met they what? They took over my contract. They took over your contract. Yeah. Which was that last that year? That last season, yeah. And you won a cup at Supersport. Did you win any cup? No, I played two cup finals. 
Yeah, and you lost them. We lost both cup finals. Yeah, was season. Ned Bank and, and MTN eight? Yeah. We lost to Swallows in the final, and Ned Bank we lost to Chiefs. Yeah. In the final. So you didn't win any. Not at SuperSport, no. Now, after that season, was it? Did you decide to retire, or situation forced you to retire? No, there was no decision. How many players decide to retire in South Africa? <laughs> Very few. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> tell me those like they, where you can say, I know this guy said, okay, yeah. I'm done. Let's you, call it a day. So, so what happened? After that year ends, are you still looking for another team? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was rough because it literally overnight. Um, I played, like I said, the Net Bank Cup final, Moses Mabira, 50,000 people. Hmm. Um, packed uh, 120 minutes not even 90 minutes hmm. we went to extra time um, and I think I gave a good account of myself so you know coming off there I felt I know I did enough to earn a, a next move uh, even uh, an extension extension um, but then what we were told uh, Supersport had done a lot of business prior like They'd signed, I think it was Tuso, Bennett, David Matabula, mm. signed all of them on pre-contracts. Um, so they had their plan for the new season. So initially I wasn't a part of that plan. Mm. Um, because also how it went for me at Supersport was my first six months, I came in with an injury. Mm. Um, and so I didn't hit the ground running. Um, so I was in and out, in and out. Again, I give credit to Kuobus. Mm. He's the sports science guy at Supersport. Mm. Uh, he's phenomenal as well. And he actually said, I'm going to make you a, a GTI. So he said, when he does the test, yeah. he'll tell you how you are, you are a, a city golf. Or, yeah. You know, he, he ranks you like that. You're a yeah. polo or a yeah. what, what. So GTI is the, you know, the, the top, top level. The quickest. So when I did my test with him, he said, ah, you, you're a ghillie. Mm. You're not even in the VW range. Yeah. And I worked with him. I actually had to go in earlier mm. before training to work with him so I could get up to speed and everything. And um, things th like it went, it was rough that first six months, I would say. I was in and out of the team. Mm. But while I was getting my fitness and getting you know, my, sh uh, my conditioning back, I was starting to slowly kind of knock on the door and say, hey, I'm here to be counted. But... I think the management were already like, this one, we signed him and he hasn't given us anything. Mm. But then the last six months to close the year. Mm. So I kind of came back when it was MTN8 final time because mm. I played the final. Um, and then again, I was like, I didn't have a great final, if I'm being honest. Mm. And it's almost like Gavin had to justify why he's playing me ahead of some of the younger players that they were signing that was promising. Mm. Um, so I think I let the coach down a bit in that regard. So I, I was almost forced out of the team again. But then I worked my way back and I started playing regularly. Second half of the season, I was buzzing. Mm. So I played pretty much, you know, the, the, all the games, all the way into the Net Bank Cup final, played the final. Um, but then I was really up and running. But then, you know, Supersport said they'd already made all these other signings and I wasn't in the plans. Mm. So they're not renewing. Um, and then, I mean, preseason started. They said, okay, there's a new coach coming in. Maybe you can come and he can decide if he wants to keep you or not. Mm. So I went back for preseason. Under Godin? No, that was Kevin Johnson. Oh, Kevin Johnson, yes. So Gavin had gone to Bedwest. So mm. Kevin Johnson came in, trained, you know, I think I did relatively well. But then afterwards he said, no, um, unfortunately, he, he can't have me in the team as like a number four. Hmm. You know, there's guys ahead of me and I should be going somewhere where, you know, where I can play. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So they didn't renew. Then I now had to obviously start looking. Hmm. And then I went to Black Aces. Hmm. They just got promoted hmm. through the playoffs. Yeah. Clive Parker was brought in. Hmm. So I meet, I go, they're having like almost an open trial or they're looking at all these players. Hmm. I get there. Um, Clive sees me, he's excited, he's like, you know, the fact that I'm available, he's like, no, signing him, like, mm. I want him. The owners are like, 
they don't know me. <laughs> I was like, okay. They, so they saying to me, no, I must train. Mm. And, you know, they'll make a decision or whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm fine, okay. And I guess I didn't, if I'm looking back at it, mm. that was an insult. Mm. But me being me, I, you know, I was okay, let yeah. me train and whatever the case may be. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And said, okay, look guys, if you're not interested, let me go somewhere else. Mm. Um, but like I trained with the team and they were playing on this rock art pitch and I got hurt playing in a training match. Mm. Funny thing, I got hurt scoring a goal at mm. the training match. And it's called a fat pad contusion. Um, mm. So under my heel. Mm. So I couldn't train. And then eventually they just said, I must stop training. Mm. So they said, no, I must just, and Clive was like, no, no, I want you, I want you. Then eventually when I couldn't train anymore, then they said, no, I must stop training with the team. Mm. So now I can't just go anywhere because I'm injured. Yeah. Now I first have to wait for the injury to heal. By the time the injury heals, again, the season, started. The season has, has started or, you know, teams are full. Mm. So there's not much I can do. But the thing that upset me is like, my agent, mm. because he never had to work for me. Mm. Like wherever he's gone, there was interest like in the past, previously. Mm. So he's never had to go out and find me a club. Mm. He'll just, if I'm available, there was interest. Mm. You know what I mean? So this time it's like, he actually had to work and maybe go and knock on doors and say, so I asked him like, what's happening, you know? Mm. He says, no, he sent an email to all the clubs. I'm like, an email, <laughs> like you haven't spoken to coach. So eventually I started calling coaches myself. Mm. And then like I called her like a Clinton Larson was at Celtic. I know he was always a fan and he was interested. Mm. Clinton said to me, he didn't know I was injured. I mean that I was available. available yeah. He said if he knew, you know, like, so that's kind of the message I was getting. Mm. So again, the whole thing around agents, you know, if your agents are not working as players, we also accountable, that's my fault. Mm. I should be like, hey, what's happening? Are mm. you working? Are you, who are you calling? What are you doing? Mm. So we leave things in the hands of the agents at times. And, you know, it's important that we, we, we take responsibility for our careers and um, who's looking after us as well. Yeah. So I think, you know, my agent let me down in that regard. And so when I started calling people for myself, mm. um, I would get interest here and there. So I eventually I went to Amazulu, but now I have to go on trial. So you go, you're on trial, they're having a look. But again, I'm at Amazulu for two weeks. Mm. The coach is not saying anything. It's like he's holding out, he's holding out. I'm not sure what's happening. Mm. So I say to him eventually, like, you know, what's going on? And then, um, because now I'm getting a call from Polokwani City. They're mm. interested. Mm. At Amazulu, who's the coach? Craig Rosley. Craig Rosley. Mm. Yeah. So eventually I'm like, coach, I mean, you've seen me, I'm fit. I'm doing the business on the field. Mm. No, I have to see you in a match. I have to see you in a match. So I'm like, but this, and he tried to sign me when he was at Ajax. Mm. So it's like, how much more do you need to see, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay. But then I say, look, the guys at Polokwane are calling now. They want to have a look as well, whatever. It's two weeks already. Surely you've seen enough. He's like, no, no, if there's other interest, you can go. Mm. So it's clear you're not serious. So eventually I'm like, okay, no, let me go. So when I go there, I go to Polo Kwane, Pubi, Coach Pubi. Mm. I trained one day mm. and he's like, no, I've seen enough. I'm mm. good. He says, let's do the deal. Mm. He goes to the management. Management says no. How? Is it financial? I, we never got there. We never got to money. We never got any, like, we never discussed. He literally, I trained just, one day and yeah. he said to me, no, I'm happy. And he went to speak to the management. He came to me and he's like, have you met, like, do you know the people? I'm like, no, I've never met the owner. I, I don't know. Mm. I've never had any interaction with them. Mm. He literally, he says, because they're saying no. Mm. Like, they, they literally just told him no. But like, if, I don't understand. And then he said to me, okay, just give me a chance. Let me see. Trained and tried, you know. Mm. I was in and out. Obviously, um, I, I was staying at the where the players all stay. Mm. Um, then I had to travel in and out. I had to go home, come back. But the whole time I'm there, he's like, just be patient. We're going to work something out. Eventually, they're just like, no. 
and, and to this day I can't tell you why I don't know who I offended or what I did but yeah the reality is no but at the club structure either chairman man, uh, team manager CEO there's nobody you worked with in your no, past no 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 yeah that, like the whole setup was new to me nobody mm. like everyone there was, was uh, I didn't know yeah so I can't tell you that I interacted or previously whatever I, d- I have no idea yeah for some reason they just it was a straight outright no and how was the clubhouse there at the Polokwane city ah, I mean it was okay I guess especially I, I think maybe for the younger players mm. um, for the more senior players I don't know so much um, so it was obviously it's a big yard uh, that everyone stays at and Mm. um but it's decent man it's it's i mean if you look at the the, the different rooms how the the it's containers that are segregated i think you can four rooms in each one mm. um so it's a big space where everyone can um can operate and i think uh, you know there's certain things that possibly could have been done better yeah so it was it was those containers like mobile classroom or mobile offices yeah pretty mm. much and then each one there's four rooms in each with a lounge and a kitchen mm. so it was decent it mm. was i mean i've experienced worse if i can say that yeah. so it's it's for a club setup um it it was it was okay yeah then after polgwani city you come back to jobek yeah um <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the last team I actually tried out for locally. I think I went to Mozambique. Mm. Um, there was an opportunity there. Someone, it was a team that was playing Champions League. Um, they wanted to have a look at me. Mm. Um, but I think the coach, there was, the coach spoke no English. So it was, that was tough. Mm. Um, and I thought we could get beyond that. Because like I say, language barrier shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. Especially in football. Um, so I can't actually tell you what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I literally like I said I went to Mozambique then I went uh, I actually went to a wedding in the US mm. and I tried to see what options are available there but then eventually I just had to say hey because uh, now your savings also and I mean there's not much yeah. savings yeah because now you also have to look at it and say hey you know you still have a family to look to to yeah. provide for what are you going to do now so you have to kind of make ends meet and so I had to make tough decisions. Mm. So I can't say I retired willingly, willingly. Yeah. And the thing is I was very capable still. Mm. I was very able and I think the thing that hurts me most now mm. because people see me and they're like, "Ah, look at you, you can still play." Yeah. Um, but 10 years ago when I was looking, you know, where were, well, you know, the people who <laughs> feel I can still give them something. Um, but eventually I had to uh, make some tough decisions and I had to look beyond my football now um i always knew that i wanted to to work as an analyst mm. um i love analyzing the game and speaking football mm. and i think i'm well spoken mm. um so i always knew that that's what i wanted to do when i was done so then i started knocking on doors now in that regard and saying okay what opportunities are there in that space in the media space so i did journalism when i was at wits mm. so one of the conditions was that i could study and I did a journalism course that kind of helped me a lot and so I could do script writing um you know I could write I could you know I kind of upskilled myself in that regard so um that's something that played a role now post my career mm. so it's interesting uh how it all worked out but eventually I got an opportunity at SABC the 24 cause I literally spent so 2013 was the Net Bank Cup final the last one I played. Mm-hmm. So the that was a 2012 2013 season. Mm. So going into the 2013 2014 14. season. Yeah. That's when I was running around trying to find the club whatever trying to look for the next move. That first six months of the 2013 14 season nothing coming into 2014 now I'm going to Mozambique, I'm going to the US. Nothing's happening. So kind of the season is kind of finishing off now. Mm. Um and I don't have a club. So I've gone a, almost a full season mm. not earning a salary at all. Mm. So whatever savings you have, surely, you can just imagine. Surely they're drying up now. Clearly. 
Um, so now you have to start making some tough decisions. Hmm. And so I looked at the TV thing and kind of knocked on a few doors, got an opportunity to speak, uh, to analyze kind of the close of the PSL season hmm. for free that you weren't getting paid most. Now you have hmm. to kind of, you're starting a new journey now, yeah. new career. Now you must pay your school fees. Hmm. So you go in as a guest, analyze, talk about the game, talk about the league, how the season has gone, whatever. Um, you show yourself, okay, it's not bad. Go in one or two times, it's fine. Now the World Cup is coming, 2014. Hmm. So now I'm kind of knocking on the door and saying, hey, let me be you know, on the panel, whatever. Doesn't really work out, but someone else sees value in you. So kind of doing news. So I didn't get on the panel to do live World games Cup. or anything. Yeah. But the guys at the news section saw, okay, there's something. So they used me for news. Hmm. So I would come in every day, um, do a recap of the previous day's games, hmm. do a um, uh, look forward to the upcoming games. So I did that for the entire World Cup. And they put me on a contract. So I, you know, now for the first time in a year, hmm. I'm earning money. Hmm. And it, you, know, you feel like, okay, you're getting back yourself back now. Yeah. But then the World Cup ends and it's like, again, dololo. Now the, the decision is, ish, am I, am I going to try to go and find a club again? Hmm. Because I'm still fit, I've been training, I'm still okay. Hmm. So now do I restart the search for a club hmm. or am I going out completely? You know, just hmm. calling it a day and saying, hey, next chapter. Hmm. But the worst thing is, while the World Cup was on, teams had started pre-season. Mm. So it's that dilemma now. I'm getting, I'm earning something here. Mm. Teams are starting pre-season. Do I want to move away here now and go look for a pre-season? Maybe get something. Yeah. Ask someone. Or do I finish off the World Cup? Finish off the World Cup because I'm earning. First mm. time in a year. So you have no choice, really. Mm. Next thing you you're going, and now it's again. Ish, what's happening now? Mm. I've stopped. Preseason is almost done. Clubs are, you know, they're not really looking. Do I really want to go there? It's like no. So I'm at SABC still now. Mm. You know, maybe I can start the season, start working as an analyst. It's not working out. Doors are closing. Mm. Um, but now, you know, my faith, again, is tested. Mm. And I'm praying now and I'm like, Lord, what's the situation? You've carried me thus far. Like, where you take me? What's the journey? Where are we going? Mm. And it's the craziest thing. It's like things you've done in the past that set you up for your future. Mm. The way you treat people in your past. You'll never know when that same person is going to open a door for you somewhere else. Mm. So someone who was a teammate in the past, who I got on really well with, that you never expect, recommends you. Mm. So um, I know Lebu Kukame was working at um, was working at ETV, or was busy as an intern. Mm. He was learning, you know. And then he asked Solta, um, Kelvin, uh, what's Kelvin's name? Uh, Mutlo. Kelvin Mutlo. Mm. He says. They're looking for an anchor, a sports anchor, mm. someone who speaks well but who's played professional sport. Mm. So Lebu asks Solta, Solta, then because he knows we've had the conversation, he knows what I'm doing. Mm. Solta calls me and he says, "Hey, there's this opportunity. Why don't you go have a look?" Mm. So I mean, that just blows my mind out, mm. like from nowhere. Mm. So I go, I call uh, Lebu Kukame. He says no. He gives my number to the executive producer there they said no i must come in and interview i went in he's like he's happy um and i mean no train formal like on air training yeah anything literally going to do live tv mm. on air presenter sports presenter co-anchor um so i went in i did a screen test mm. and done Signed mm. a contract. I think a three-year contract to say I'm going to be the sports anchor for Sunrise. Mm. 
and now I mean I've spent a whole year I mean look at that cycle where yeah. I was chasing something um, and literally where I stopped and I was like Lord I'm, I'm done mm. doing things in my own strength mm. because this has been me I haven't even consulted I've just been running around like a headless chicken mm. and I said Lord okay you lead me you guide me I'm mm. handing over now I'm mm. done and the way all this worked out can only be God and I mean the valuable lessons I learned there I mean I was when I started the show I had a, a sports producer hmm. who used to help me produce my slots and my segments and whatever but he after like two months hmm. he was like ah this is too much hmm. you can't handle it the pressure hmm. he left hmm. and they never replaced him hmm. so what we had there was we had another guy who was the he was a sports reader i mean a, a news reader mm. he was kind of in charge of the sports we never replaced the sports producer mm. we did everything ourselves mm. and so i learned how to script how to source images i mean I, all my inserts like you know everything we did i had to produce my own slots mm. from script writing it, uh, visuals sourcing the guests mm -hmm. so i had to literally call guests so yeah. whether we're doing cricket rugby whatever i learned how to do all that and it was like on the fly mm. um so i know your pain mm. especially when it comes to footballers yeah um <laughs> footballers honoring I interviews or appointments interviews, appointments yeah i know that all too the funny thing is i always say that's my world like that's where i come from so mm. i always thought okay my people won't let me down mm. so when i call football guys for an interview they're going to show up mm. ah, <laughs> i quickly learned ah, no so like every time i had a football slot i mm. had to have an alternative mm. so i had to do two um prepare double prepare basically yeah. in case this guest doesn't show up mm. And more often than not, for some reason, the football guys would let me down. Mm. Eventually, I was like, nah. I mean, this says a lot in itself. Yeah. It speaks volumes. And so I know that pain. Um, but I learned a lot in that process. So I worked and I did that for three and a half years. Mm. Um, but in that period, I was doing my coaching badges as well. Mm. So I did my D license um, while I was at Sunrise. And then an opportunity came up. Uh, again you know it's divine intervention where um, someone I know recommended me mm. and again it's like I always say you know how you treat people matters who you are every day all day matters mm. you know sometimes we treat people according to their station in life according to their rank mm. but my life philosophy has always been do unto others as you would have them do to you so treat people the way you want to be treated. So I've always tried to live my life in that manner. Mm. And again, like the same way where I didn't go and apply for that job. Mm. It like kind of came to me. But it's because of relationships I've built and the way I've treated people in the past, they were willing to go, you know, mm. that extra mile for me. Mm. In the same way, my, the work at Vits, of, you know, someone I know, a good friend of mine, recommended me for the job. And he said, hey, you need someone, this person is your man. I went in there, I interviewed. They even changed the criteria mm. because I wasn't qualified. Mm. So you needed to have at least a C license. Mm. But I went in and I interviewed and they were so impressed with the interview that they literally went and changed the criteria for the, for the position mm. so that I could be appointed. Mm. And again, it's... I mean, I, I honor God for that and I thank God for opening that door. And, mm. you know, not long before that, I heard one a preacher say that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Yeah. And so that literally spoke to me because when I went in, I was not qualified. Mm. But I ended up getting the job. Mm. Um, so now I was doing Sunrise and I was head of football at Wits University. Mm. So, and I was coaching the varsity team. Mm. Um, which was an amazing, amazing journey for me as well. Like learning. Now you're putting into practice what you think you know. Yeah. Um, and your responsibility is to 
to raise the standard of football at an institution, mm. um, which I think I did. Um, I think I was relatively successful, you know, um, didn't start well, mm. but all that was school fees was yeah. learning. Yeah. Um, and e eventually, I think we, we you know, we, we built a solid, solid program. Um, and then ETV ended. Again, I didn't, I didn't leave. Um, you know, there was a change of season. And again, that was God saying, hey, it's time now. But mm -hmm. then you don't listen because you're comfortable. You're like, you're earning, you know, you, you want to stay where it's comfortable. Yeah. Um, but then eventually that ended as well. Um, and then finished. 2018, just before the World Cup again, mm. um, and then the 2018 World Cup, I started knocking on the door at Super at SABC again because mm. that's ultimately what I wanted to do. Mm. So I did radio. Then I learned now to do radio commentary, mm. um, and I was doing some games for the news as well. Um, I wasn't on the fully fledged platform yet mm. where I wanted to be, where you know you're doing live games. Mm. I was doing reviews and whatever. Um, but then eventually that after the World Cup had passed, um, I started doing EP, uh, like Premier League games mm. at the SABC, which was really great. And so I was constantly developing and constantly um, evolving mm. and learning on the fly. And so it, I guess, gets me to where I am now, where um, currently working as an analyst, enjoying it, um, love talking about football, but I'm still involved in the game. Mm. Um, I'm not at Wits anymore. I left, or my contract wasn't renewed. I think it's 2020, as COVID hit, yeah. um, I was out there. So life informs life. And, you know, because of how my life, how things went in my life, I've always had to um, evolve and adapt and post playing, um, you have to think outside the box. I mm. mean, um, you have, we have to do better in preparing. I didn't prepare mm. adequately. I did a little bit, but I didn't adequately prepare for, for post uh, my playing days. Um, and so even now, it's like you, you're finding your way. Mm. Um, I can't say I've arrived or I've achieved what I want to or I'm wherever, anywhere, you know, at a goal or a place in my life where I'm, I'm happy or I'm comfortable or whatever the case may be, but you're constantly evolving yeah. and that's life. And so even when COVID hit, I mean, I was, my contract, I wasn't at, um, I was at SABC, hmm. my contract at FITS had just finished. So there was no football, hmm. so there's nothing at SABC. My contract ended at Wits. Yeah. Those are my sources of income. Mm. So now you have to look now. Huh. Okay. Your family still has to eat and you still yeah. have to provide and you still have... What do you do now? Mm. Now you have to start being creative. And so started doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm. Um, you know, again, people recommend you. Like mm. you put out, you start getting yourself together, get equipment, whatever start with one child doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with them someone else comes and sees now eventually i've got like 20 kids i'm busy with mm. um just doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or like now group small group share sessions or whatever and now you've learned a new skill and a new trade and you've upskilled yourself mm. but you know it's easy to lay down and die but then again in that time it's like lord i know you'll make a way mm. i'm gonna rest a on you, I'm going to trust in you, and I know you will make a way. Mm. And literally all these things just start happening and, you know, eventually you find yourself in a place where you're like, okay, I can actually do this. Mm. So now you've started a new career and you've found a way to generate income. Through it. And you're not dependent on any, this is you now. Mm. So now how big can this get? How big do you want it to get? How, you know, where can it grow from there? And so that's how you evolve and I guess, you know, you get to a place where you're like, okay, I need to start yeah. thinking bigger. And I guess I'm there now where I want to maximize on my potential, maximize on my ability. Um, they say the best time to plant a tree mm. 
is 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. Mm. So I didn't do it back then. Mm. I didn't do the groundwork and I didn't prepare myself adequately and I didn't do what needed to be done. But I have right now. Mm. And now I can start working forward and still I have a long life to live. Yeah. And I've got plenty to do in this world. True. So, so this uh, one-on-one coaching project, you're still running it? No, at the moment, uh, I, I, I stopped because um, I'm doing a lot. I do a lot of coaching in the community where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm working with a good friend of mine who runs his own academy. So we kind of trying to work with players and create opportunities for players. Yeah. Um, but I got other opportunities that kind of I had to make a choice now if I'm going to carry on with that or mm. if I'm going to go a different route. And I've chosen a different route now. Yeah. So um, that other route is, is the one I hate. Uh-huh. You know, the, 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 the avenue I hate it. So again, how you treat people speaks volumes. And an opportunity came mm. where I was called out of the blue. Mm. And so it's like, hey, what's happening here? Mm. Um, so I got a call I was at one of my coaching sessions Mm. and I get a call and it's like uh, an agency and a prominent agency asking me like hey would you be interested in joining us Mm. and I'm like nope I hate agents (laughs) I hate agents I want nothing to do with agents Mm. And, you know, the gentleman says to me, well, if that's how you feel, then you're the right man for the job because we want someone who's going to look after our players and think for the players Mm. and think as a player and make sure he looks after their best interest and does right by them. Mm. Um, And so I guess, yeah, I'm in that space now where managing players, Mm. um, trying to help players not make the mistakes we made, trying to guide them give them the service that we wish we had gotten. Because mm. like I said, my philosophy is do unto others as you would have them do. Yeah. And so that's a new venture that I've gotten into, but I don't want to say too much about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that and I, I respect that. So, but uh, adjustment from today you are a top uh, professional player, the next day you must adjust that I'm no longer a player now, it's a new life. Like you said, you didn't prepare, but now you are preparing while you're in the process of surviving. I think it's it's traumatizing. Mm. And I think people need to... It's, it's one of the, the toughest things to deal with. And again, I honor God for being in my life and helping me through that period. And I don't think enough is done to equip footballers. Mm. Um, they and I'm not talking about for life after football. Mm-mm. I'm talking about you speak about the mental anguish that comes with a career that like what you know, your skill, mm. your your thing that that sets you apart from everyone else is just gone. Like it's traumatizing. Mm. And I can't say that today it's it's literally it's the tenth season. Mm. I say 10 years just to shorten it, but this is the 10th year that I'm out of the game. Mm. And 10 years later, I don't think I fully dealt with it. I honestly don't think I've I've fully, because of how it ended. Mm. You know, it didn't end on my terms. It didn't end the way I wanted it to. I didn't have the swan song where, I mean, even though my last game, I mean, I couldn't have, probably couldn't have asked for a better game to play in. Mm. Where it's a net bank cup, you know, sold out Nedbank Cup final at Moses yeah. Mabida. Probably couldn't ask for a better game, so I'm, I should be grateful for that. But you didn't know what's the last one. But the reality is, I didn't plan for that to be, I, and it wasn't supposed to be. Hmm. Like, I, I, I was still good enough to play. I was still, I, I could have played three or four more years from there. Hmm. I mean, I was 32 at the time. Hmm. I gave myself at least until 35. Hmm. I said, no, I can play till 35, no problem. Hmm. And I looked after myself. My body was in good nick. Um, so it's not like I had st- struggling with injuries where you're like, ah, do I really want to go through this again? Mm. I was fine. I could play. It's traumatizing. 
it is it is traumatizing and it is the reality for most south african footballers mm. i don't know many guys who really retire on their own terms where they just like ah, it's been good yeah i've had a great career i've had enough mm. i'm done let me bow out um let the next you know let Generation someone else take over through. yeah there are not many yeah and that's why you have so many disgruntled former footballers mm. how many times have you heard and i because i used to hate it when i played mm. i'm very careful not to do it now i don't want to do it mm. but how often do you hear footballers like ah in our day mm. when we were playing yeah. this that i i don't want to do that because it's a different time it's a different era mm. we can't compare when we played to you know Yeah. I I I think it's much harder to be a professional footballer today mm. than it was when I started. Mm. Um so I don't want to be that guy and I'm not going to be that guy but the reality is it's tough when when the thing you love and the thing that you know is taken away from you mm. and it ends in the blink of an eye. It's traumatizing and uh, unfortunately a lot of players fall victim to it and I don't think uh we have any structures in place to deal with that mm. where there's mental the like support not necessarily from i mean financially we know it's a problem but just the mental side of it yeah. where you have to deal with my career is over it's mm. done uh i'm finished and like i say 10 years later i don't think i've completely dealt with it yeah so it's 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 rough It's rough. It's rough. And and I can imagine uh, I mean in your situation you left football uh within few months you were somehow employed which uh, also you'll hear team saying to a player I'll give example uh Sundown said hey, KK uh, retire and come and work yeah. he said no because mm. he still felt he can play. Yeah. Pirate said uh, Jele uh, retire come and work he said no because he still felt he can play. Mm. What's usually the issue because my thinking and you'll tell me if if I'm wrong we don't need to go exact numbers or details. If I am I'm reti- leaving football as a player going to an office work by default the financial benefits are not the same. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah 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 of course. First you you must adjust mm. and prepare that I was here in terms of finance my life was here. Now yes I'm offered a job but I'm going here. But I was not ready to adjust because I need time to adjust. What are some You're of the things scaling. when I'm here I can let go so I prepare myself here. D- does it also play a role? Even if a, a, a current team offers you an office work, it's not easy to say okay, sharp, I'm going to office leaving the pitch. I don't I, like you know, the, those decisions are not are not monetary necessarily. Um as a footballer, mm. When you start out playing it it's like you can play forever. You feel like you're going to be playing forever. Yeah. And then when you get to the latter part of your career you realize okay my career is coming to an end. Mm. But you know that you can only do this for so long. Mm. So you don't want to miss an opportunity or you don't want to give because when you're done you're done. Mm. So office work will still be there. Mm. But if I'm still capable of playing today mm. tomorrow I won't be. but today i can play mm. why shouldn't i play do you understand it yeah big it's something that you love you enjoy um and so it's a difficult thing to give up when you're able to you're still able to push yourself you're still able to you're on that level mm. if if you were playing like i mean you, we speak about uh, lompo mm. if if lompo was a dad mm. where all of us are saying ah bra let's give it up now Mm. then you you can understand but he's still competitive and he's still playing he's able to compete with the best in the country mm. you know why 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 would you stop then yeah you know it and maybe we shouldn't be playing until we're dead mm. i mean if we look at zidane zidane rec- you know he finished at the pinnacle mm. at the height where he was at a you know world cup final mm. and he said okay i'm done mm. um but we don't all have that kind of luxury you know like for us it's like you you've got so mu- only have so much time mm. i want to maximize on that time and so i don't think it's necessarily 
a thought process of ish if i stop now i'm only going to be paid this and so mm. i think it's just that like you you can still play mm. and you want to still play mm. and that fire doesn't go out and if that fire goes out then you're like i don't in, if, if it's a burden to wake up in the morning and go to training then you probably thinking ish no maybe i'm done but when you up for it you know you wake up and you're ready and you want to go you want to go as long as possible yeah I, I hear you. And, and tell me, you, you mentioned that you got married at the age of 23. Does it help, not that it's a mastery default settings, does it help to be grounded at that early age? I definitely, I think it plays a big role. Um, it gives you uh, a why. It gives you, it keeps you focused. Um, I mean, without that, it's easier to be led astray. And we all are susceptible to that. So I don't know what would have happened if I didn't. Mm. Uh, maybe I would have fallen victim or prayed to, you know, what so many of our, my, my counterparts and my peers have fallen prey to. But I think it definitely, it gave me a, a why and it gave me a reason, like, you know, where I know why I'm pushing myself. I know the motivation behind going the extra mile. Mm. Um, like when I was injured, mm. I worked extremely hard, extremely hard. And I'm the type of person who's very... I'm too relaxed and too chilled. Mm. And so if I didn't have at least that motivation, I don't know what would have come of me. So I think uh, my family was a, a massive, massive motivation to really, you know, try to push myself. And so I think it does, again, we're all different. Mm. What motivates me might not motivate the next person. So there is no right and wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely for me personally, it, it, it played a big role and I think maybe my career would have been much shorter if mm. it weren't for that motivation. So in, in y y y you were a guy who were grounded, you will hardly do nightlife. But what do you do as teammates of the pitch when you know we've got this player, he's helping the team, but the problem is uh, the nightlife and sometimes he comes to training, you see he's not himself. Do you ever, have you experienced a teammate like that, no need to drop a name? Yeah, yeah. And no, I, I got burned because of that. Mm. Um, and I blame myself again. Like, uh, so we had that issue at one of the clubs I was at. Mm. And um, we were in contention. Mm. We were doing very well. Um, the league started. We were, we were up there with the front runners. Mm. And then like two of our teammates were... I didn't see it. Like, mm. I was told that, you know, they... Um, they were sleeping in the car outside. They came straight to training from wherever they were. Mm. They even had to shower before training just to, you know, get themselves going. Mm. Um, I didn't see it, but all my teammates were telling me this. Mm. And some of the younger guys, players were coming to me and saying, um, but now, look, what kind of example is this? And these are senior players. Mm. What must we do if they are doing this? Mm. And we, we, we competitive, you know? Mm. And so I was like, oh, okay, then maybe like, what, let's talk about it amongst ourselves or whatever. I wasn't the captain of the team. Mm. I, sh I shouldn't have been, like, I don't know why everyone was turning to me. Mm. But eventually, the captain and the most senior players come to me as well and say, okay, we must have a meeting and deal with this thing. Mm. So we said, okay, fine, let's have a meeting then. Mm. But then, in the meeting, they ask me to speak. Yeah. <laughs> So now it looks like it's my meeting. Yeah. But I'm not the one who even called the meeting. Yeah. The younger players asked, then the more senior players, the captain and vice captain, they're the ones who asked. Mm. So again, in my naivety, I was like, okay, I'll just put the issue out there and address, then we can all talk about it. But eventually the way that whole thing played out mm. is like I'm the one that was accusing people of being drunk, you know, drunk and whatever. Because mm. um, then our season tanked mm. and then we had another meeting because now there was like talk the coach is going to get bombed and whatever mm. we as players must take responsibility and then in that meeting it was said the problem came when Mark had a meeting telling people they are drunk mm. so I sat there and I was like wow <laughs> so I had a meeting yeah. I'm the one you know and so I got burned because of that and I don't know then eventually that got to the coaches mm. because we didn't include the coaches in that meeting. In that meeting. We mm. thought, okay, we're going to deal with it as players. Mm. 
Hmm. And we just said, look, we're in a good place. We have the ability now to challenge and to really push on. But let's not, you know, let's try to do the right things. Hmm. So when things went wrong, that was my meeting. I'm hmm. the one who called that meeting. So that's where our season went wrong. Yeah. And so from there you said, Aksad again. Yeah, I mean, w surely you have to learn from that. Yeah. So I was like, okay, if that's the situation, stop being that guy. Um, hmm. I'm not going to, you know, why, why? It's not that like you still guide wherever, whoever asks you for help, you can guide and try and help the youngsters. But on a platform like that where you now, you ask to, and when I looked at it, hmm. I blame myself. Yeah. I wasn't the captain of the team. Hmm. They were captains. They're the ones who should have addressed that thing. Yeah. Why did why did they ask me and yeah. why did I accept? I should never have accepted that. And one. and also this issue you've never seen it. You were told that they yeah, are Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can't say there's a day where you saw a teammate go to this one today is drunk. And that's exactly what was said. But the thing is, even the kit manager mm. is the one who came and he said this is what happened. Yeah. Because he was there when they had to come in and shower and whatever. He's the one even he verified everything. Yeah, the kid manager always knows. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> so there was nothing that could be said. Yeah. So, but my fault was I should never have ac accepted that responsibility. Mm. There were captains in the team and they should have dealt with it. And they are the ones that should have, um, should have taken the lead. So I blame myself for that, but it was a lesson learned. So I knew, okay, in this game, you have yeah. to look out for yourself to a certain extent, help where you can, mm. but in the bigger picture, you have to make sure that you, you know, you don't expose yourself like that. So, yeah, so yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Um, those things do happen. Mm. So, f footballers, as we we mentioned earlier, they are associated with glamorous lifestyle, because fashion. At which team of all the teams you played for, you'll say the cars, the parking lot was. They were driving expensive cars. Nah, the, the, I didn't play for any of those teams. Uh, yeah. I think when you look at, uh, I guess Supersport was probably of the teams I played for mm. because that was probably the team that were paying uh, the, the best salaries. Mm. But Vest was really just getting to a place where now they were paying uh, better. better. Mm. But only after I left was where, you know, the serious, serious... Big name players yeah. came in. So I never played uh, at a point where, you know, you look where guys are coming with um, crazy, uh, with ridiculous stuff. Mm. I think every, all the clubs I played for was, was pretty much the same. It was average. Average, yeah. yeah. There wasn't any, any situation where, you know, guys were coming with different cars every day and everyone, you know, knew who they were. They understood yeah. uh, where we were. We weren't at that kind of club. Mm. And in in your battles in the middle field, who was your toughest opponent? Yeah, um, there've been some tough ones, some really really tough ones. Um, but I think some interesting clashes. Definitely Tinashe Nangomashe. Mm. Yeah. Um, at, against Chiefs was always it was always a battle. Um, you know, Tlompo was always a, you know I remember. A sp not so much sundowns. I remember playing him when he was at Supersport. Mm. Um, and I remember him and Letladi Mudibanya in yeah. the midfield together at some yeah. point when Supersport won the league. Mm. Those were tough games. Um, so those were some tough opponents. But yeah, I think those... Kazande wasn't... Ah, I wouldn't say... I, I, I think uh, like against Nengomashe, yeah. Katande is lightweight not yeah. no, i'm joking <laughs> now i think uh, yeah, but it's not this against yeah. against tinashe was probably tougher uh, yeah. in the midfield there he's probably one that that stood out hmm. Hmm. and uh, your best teammates I, I know there's always a lot you played a lot of you played for a lot of you teams mean te your teammate that you say this was the best teammate or somebody i'm playing nicely sure. with um your yeah. In terms of like individual player that I played with that I looked up to and I was like, wow, this guy is, is quality. Mm. Um, and I think they're kind of in the same vein and also guys I played against. Mm. Um, my toughest opponent, because you actually, I have to say, it's probably Shoes, Mushwe. Yeah. I remember as a youngster at Cosmos, mm. and you know Cosmos is a lot about man marking. Yes. 
I remember being on the bench mm. and shoes was hurting us that day. Mm. And Jomo says to me, go and you, you must be here. Yeah. <sighs> that day I saw flames mm. because like literally I'm with shoes now mm. and the ball is playing. I know he's here, mm. but I just watched the ball. Mm. Next thing is getting the ball somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like everyone has got their man. Mm. So that's my man. I have to get there. Yeah. By the time I get there, he's given it already and he's getting it. He's receiving it on the other end. Hey, he was a nightmare to deal with. He was just too clever. But I always fancied players in that vein. Mm. And so players that I played with um, is Tiko Bukwane. Mm. Um, Emmanuel. Emmanuel Bukwane, Tiko yeah. Tiko. He was... He made it look so easy. Football was effortless with him. Mm. Um, I learned a lot watching him, playing next to him. Um, he made it look so good. And then the same way, Dennis Lota when uh, at Swallows mm. uh, for a short spell. But wow, watching him, you learn so much at training. Just watching him at training was amazing. Um, and then also, like I say, playing against shoes, just watching him and trying to stay close to him, mm. you learn so much. And so I think those are some of the standout players. Um, and then a player that I've played with for a very long time, Kakiso Denge. Yeah. Um, like he just made football also look so simple. Like he's big, you know, he's, he could have been like a Yaya Torre. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't know, I can't say why, I can't put a finger on it to say what, but he had that ability. He was so silky with the ball. Mm. Um, he's big frame, but you know, he could move with it as well. He could distribute. Um, he packed quite a shot as well. I don't think he used it as much as he should have, but he was also um, a, a phenomenal player in yeah. his own right. Um, so I enjoyed watching him, enjoyed playing with him. Still do now. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I think those, those were some of the, the, the really, really standout players that I've played with. Yeah. And, and at Cosmos, as you said, they were famous for men marking and one other thing, their defenders were famous for being hard tacklers. Does, does it come natural or is what you guys were training? <laughs> no, I think it's the mold of player that Jomo signed. Mm. So he knew what he was looking for in a defender mm. and so he had tough tackling defenders. Um, so it's, you know, everyone says that Cosmos was this dirty team. They used to kick everyone. We never felt that we were that team. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's just the mold of defender that Jomo signed. And uh, you wanted his, his defenders to get stuck in. I think, you know, he's old school like that. Uh, that's, he was kicked to Bert. He'll always tell us. And he'll, he used to show us all his scars mm. on his leg of, you know, the times defenders were dealing with him. Mm. So that's what he knows. And that's how football was played in his day. And I guess that's what he expected of his defenders. Mm. Definitely. So now, in closing, um, if you were to advise the current boys now, they just turn pro, some they will soon turn pro, what advice would you give them uh, regarding South African football and life after football? So, it's not a bad thing. Like, um, we were so afraid of, of football finishing. And you know that whole thing about, you know, when your football career ends and you don't want to look to the end. Mm. And we're so afraid about talking about it. And, you know, it's, it's almost like death. Mm. Nobody wants to talk about, you know, when they're going to die. Yeah. Or, you know, what have they prepared for when, you know, your family after you die. It's, yeah. it's uncomfortable. It's difficult conversations to have. Mm. Um, and it is a reality of life. There is going to come a time, you know. Mm. Um, and football is, is very much the same and it's conversations we don't want to have. No 18 year old getting into the game or 20 year old, whatever, wants to think about the end. Mm. And we're not saying that your career is going to be over tomorrow. Mm. But when you get to the end, it's going to feel like it was like that. Mm. It, it goes by so quickly. And I want footballers to push themselves and be the best that they can be. Um, but there is a reality in football. The reality is not about what if you get injured when you play. The reality is it will end at some point. And then what do you do? Mm. Are you preparing for a life after football? And there's no footballer who can tell me he doesn't have the time mm. to invest himself in other things. 
And I think it will actually benefit footballers to have a life outside of football. Hmm. And when I say a life outside of football, I'm not talking about partying and whatever, where you actually have another, something that you invested in, hmm. where another career outside of football, where, and I know maybe clubs don't want it because they want players to focus, but there's a way of doing things. You're training, we know pre-season is the only time you're really training extra. And it's a lot harder now than it was in our day. Hmm. Training sessions are longer. There's more required of footballers today than there was when we were. We go into training, train your two hours and you leave. Hmm. Now there's meetings, there's match analysis, there's, there's so many different things. The game has evolved. Hmm. And so it has gotten harder to be a professional footballer. But in the same vein, it, it's not so taxing that you can't be um, focused in other areas or you can't have other things that you're doing. Hmm. And so I think when you, when you are playing with your stomach, hmm. and when I say that I mean like when you play football and that's the only thing you have, you're playing with your stomach because if you don't have a team, you're not going to eat. Yeah. It's, it's a lot harder than when you have something else that you're doing. Mm. So if football doesn't work out, you still have something that you're capable of doing. But you put so much more pressure on yourself when it's only football. Mm. So if you don't succeed today, if you don't do, play well today, if you don't, you know, the, the pressure is so much more. Like I won't eat tomorrow if I'm not performing today. Mm. It's undue pressure that it's going to cause you to fail. And so even having things that you're doing outside of football where you're preparing, it helps you in your game. But the biggest thing for me and the biggest lesson that I learned post my playing career, mm. we didn't conduct ourselves like professionals. Mm. We were professional footballers who were very unprofessional. Mm. We didn't treat ourselves like professionals. And that's why the, the rate or the, the lifespan of the footballer in this country is so short. Mm. So how many guys have we seen come in and they hit one hit wonders and then we just, they fall out. Yeah, Because there's no sustainability in, in, in what they're doing and how they're doing things. So we need to be professionals. The same way a doctor is a professional, a lawyer is a professional. Um, look at any career, accountants, mm. whatever. I mean, you are a professional. You, whatever you're doing, you've equipped yourself, you've trained yourself, mm. you've prepared yourself to be the best that you can be in, in your space. Mm. So no doctor goes um, to surgery without having prepared himself mm. or a lawyer without, you know. And the same way we as footballers, football is too social in this country. And the footballer himself mm. is, is, he sees it as a social event. Mm. It's not social. You're a professional footballer. You're an athlete. You're a professional athlete. And you should conduct yourself as, as such. Hmm. So what are you eating? How much sleep are you getting? You know, all the things that will help you be optimum, to perform at your optimum, you need to be doing those things. And I can tell you that not enough South African footballers conduct themselves in a professional manner. I had an encounter with a player recently hmm. who told me that he pays someone to pre he can't cook. He lives on his own. Hmm. He's, he's not in his home province. He's away from home. He lives on his own, but he pays somebody hmm. to cook for him. And that blew my mind. Hmm. That should be the norm and not the exception. He's very much the exception. Hmm. That should be the norm, but it's not by any stretch of the imagination. And yes, maybe a lot of players are not earning enough to be able to do those kind of things. Hmm. But what measures are you putting in place? If you are a professional, conduct yourself as a professional. Hmm. This is what you do. This is your livelihood. You're so afraid of losing this thing. So why aren't you looking after it better? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's one thing that I want for our footballers is to be more professional, to conduct yourself as a professional. We don't do that enough. I think that's one of the single biggest problems within our, for our players right now. Football is still too social. I mean, it should be fun and you should enjoy it. It's, it's there to entertain the masses. Hmm. 
for them it's social and for them it's entertainment. Yeah. For you that's on the field. Yeah. That's your profession. Hmm. You should conduct yourself like a professional and we don't do that. And when we can change that mindset, our football as a whole is going to change. So it's too easy like, you know, it's, it's social, it's social. You, you know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. When you see players before the game, after the game, it's social. It's seen as a social event. Yeah. And maybe for everyone else beside the players it is, but as a player, it shouldn't it be shouldn't social. Be. That's your profession. Yeah, that's, that's, what your, that's your business. That's, that's what you do for a living. Yeah. So you should treat it, your facility, your body. This is what earns you money. So don't treat your body anyhow. Hmm. Your body is your, your livelihood. For a guitarist, he uses his guitar to make him money. Hmm. This is what you use to make money. For, you know, for whoever. Whatever they do, they are professionals. Yeah. We have to conduct ourselves in that manner. Are we doing that? So from a player perspective, we have to do better in that regard. Yeah. And us, those of us who've been there before, mm. it's our responsibility. So a lot of it rests on us. And I feel like we have failed the next generation. Are we doing enough to show them different, to teach them different, to help them to improve? Because as a, is our football improving or is it regressing? Mm. Everybody believes we are going down. So what's our responsibility in that? What are we responsible? Where do we fall short? So all of us have a role to play in that, especially those of us who come before the current crop. How are we helping them? Mm. We need to be doing more to help them. And I don't think we're doing that. We've, we're easy to criticize. We would say, ah, this current crop, this generate, this, this. And I hate that. Yeah. Because their failing is our failing. So if they are failing right now, it's because we have failed and we have failed them. Yeah. So if they are not improving, we have a role to play in that. So we have to inform the next generation and help them get better. Because those who came before us, did they help us? If they didn't help us, why are we doing the same thing they did? To the ones that are coming. Yeah. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Mm. So treat people the way you want to be treated or the way you wish you were treated. Yeah. That's my final say, yeah. I guess. No, no, well said, well said, Mark. You know, when I talk to somebody and then you mention God, I feel like it's okay, we can close this, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, well, well message. Uh, and I hope players, uh, current players will watch and, and receive it well and practice what you are, what you are saying. And you are very right that they, 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 they don't see this as a business. They don't see the business side of football. They just see the social of um, entertaining. Even after 90 minutes, they still want to entertain at their own places. Mm. So the, the sooner they, they realize this is their daily bread and through it is what God chose that you will survive through football. Yeah. But it's up to you. If you don't respect what I gave you as a survivor, it's okay, but I gave you something. Mm. Yeah. So, you know football, we can take the whole day and, yeah. and night. Um, if you don't have anything more to say, I'd like to close it. No, I just appreciate Thank you for, for the time. It's, it's been awesome, man. Enjoyed yeah. it. No, I, I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot and I hope other people learn. Because sometimes your stories, they don't only teach footballers. Even a young professional who starts to work, he, he, he listens to this and then he makes the right decisions. Uh, they've got a chance because a, a professional who's going to work until 60 he can make mistake between 23 and 30 by 30 he gets matured he rectify he's got time yeah. but footballers they don't have but imagine if he just decided i'm not going to make those mistakes from 23 years i'm doing the right thing yeah he, he's he's sorted exactly and yeah. that's the thing the earlier you start the better the chance you have and so yeah. um like i said the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago yes second best time is now right now do I'm the right things now i'm happy amen let's close this one <laughs> uh, from me tk this is a wrap that was a good conversation with mark haskins uh, continue to share continue to comment continue to advise where you think we can improve the show remember the show is not for us it's for you as fans and the upcoming players they need to learn from these uh, legends that south african game what is it like and what is more likely to end like but once again, it's not the end of the world. Some of you soccer players, former, don't hide. Uh, come out, tell your story. Somebody will learn from it. You come here, somebody loved you when you were a player. 
he knows your struggles. If you are struggling or you are pushing some project, he can help you. So let's not be selfish with the information and the knowledge we accumulated during our playing days. From me, TK Tereb, let's meet on the next episode. Bye-bye.